Far be it from me to be late to my own party. How you guys doing? I see we already got a chat thread going. Excellent. See some familiar names. Hey, Jay. Always there. Boopster. My mods. Thank you, Pamela. Oh, I'm pretty sure more will be dropping in. Square Pig, how you doing? Square Pig, I'll be sending you a document probably tonight or in the morning. Oh, I've been busy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been busy going through 20-something predictions videos and creating a single list of every single prediction I have made on my channel through all these uh, the past two and a half years. It's a lot. The exact date the prediction was published on YouTube. I'm going through it. Some really interesting stuff. But then again, I've been telling you guys for a while that the last few months of 2022 is going to get real interesting. It already has, though. Allow me to do a sound check first. <clears throat> yeah, just let me know, somebody. I don't need 15 people telling me. Just one or two people. Let me know. You guys can hear me pretty good. Audio's good. Thank you, Chloe. All right. So I, I posted, I posted the video, as you know, my, my, uh, my interaction with cosmic consciousness out of Australia. They were on Norfolk Island or something. It was an island like in between Australia and New Zealand, somewhere in the South Pacific. They're on an island. So I, I, I talked to them. I've done a, I've done a podcast with Paranormies. Those four guys, I like them. I'm gonna go back on with them too. We went, we went deep, but we went in other directions. So I also did one with the uh, the higher, the higher side chat. I'll be here. I'll be getting a copy, copy of that pretty soon. And I'll put it on my channel. Thank you, Martha. So this is the freestyle. Absolutely no holds barred. Whatever you want to ask, let's get to this. Get down to the nitty gritty. More and more people are catching on. Your understanding. Uh, yes, three hundred and forty over three hundred and forty videos. I get it. Many of the videos are from a heliocentric perspective. I get it. Many of the videos are from the ancient perspective, as opposed to more modern, sophisticated understandings. I get it. Many of my videos are from from more primitive frames of reference. I have provided video content from multiple frames of reference throughout multiple periods to basically to give the it really does put it all together for you once you understand every single thing we're, we're experiencing right now, we are experiencing from within inside a beautiful construct, but that does not mean it's not real somewhere else. That's all. That's why I posted what I posted today. I was getting too much, too many, too many new people. It's not my older veterans. I, I'm not even talking to my older veterans. The people that have been with Archaics for, for, you know, four or five, six months who have gone through over a hundred videos, they already understand. They are, this is a copy of a real place, but we're not in the real place. This is just a copy and beautiful things can happen here. And we make beautiful things happen for us all the time. But you could also, you could also just slide back and start existing in the lives of others and fall straight into the traps of negative default programming or dungeon programming and you can be a victim of the collective you can participate in what the in the lives that they lead which is the same life every single day so uh, i wanted to post i i did a couple posts today i might have posted three times today i don't, I don't normally do that uh once a day I, I do a post but today it was necessary i was getting a lot of uh deals another thing that seemed to have triggered several people and you made some very good observations and yes i do agree with you that 9 11 was predicted however it kind of robs me of the essence of my point that i made in that video and that was that when major events occur they're not they're not expected the collective is caught totally totally off guard so so are most of those of us who believe we're awake so 9-11 was one of those incidents. 
So what if people in the past had predicted it? So what that if in retrospect, we can look back to creative Hollywood predictive programming and see where it was foreshadowed? The truth is that at 7 a.m. on September 11th in the year 2001, 99.9999% of the world was com caught completely flat-footed that this was going to happen and that these events were going to unfold. That a minority already knew was probably indicative that there were either participants in it or they were fed that information. But even if even if 100,000 people knew that it was going to happen, the vast majority of the race did not. It caught us flat-footed. So that was my that was my whole point in the, in that uh, presentation to cosmic consciousness. We can always we can always isolate particulars. There are there are exceptions to every rule. So some of you did educate me. I had no idea that 9/11 had been predicted in different ways. Some of you, some of you had cited some people I'd never heard of that that had done that. That's pretty interesting to me. I appreciate that. So, being a freestyle and being you have an absolute inability to convey anything verbally to me, I'm going to have to take some time to look at these comments. I appreciate you guys for joining me. We got 500 people in the chat. Uh 200, 200 thumbs up. Oh, you know what? I believe that'll go up. Let's see. I've had some pretty good times, though. I've been very busy, uh, extremely busy, not just in the presentation material, but uh, I, ha I have a, I have a couple, I have a couple Islamic colleagues that have been sending me some really, really, really good information because I want to do a deep dive into the Quran as a source of information from the ancient Arabic Saracen world that shows that these people had an intimate knowledge of resets and basically a, a good understanding of eschatology as the, uh, basically how the rest of the world understands about the Phoenix event, Nemesis X object, that these resets occur, civilizations have vanished. This is in the Quran as well. So, uh, I'm taking my time going through this material as they're sending it to me, and I have my own material to supplement with it as well. I want that video to be respectful, and I want that video to be good, so I'm, I'm in no hurry to do it. So, uh, <clears throat> Oh, somebody quoting Mark Twain. I think that was Benny. I was moving too fast, and I lost it. Uh, for those of you who are members, I thank you for your support. I did activate something today. I don't know if it will. It's instant. I don't know if it's instant, but I was able to. We had a little break there. I was able to upload little pictures that are that are just for archaics, uh, little emojis that are designed just for archaics. Uh, you could choose different ones, errant or guardian or like Tome Warden, um, Cirrus, Bard. You can choose different ones. I don't I don't know how long it takes YouTube to do stuff like that. I just learned how to upload that type of stuff today. So I've been I've been doing I've been really busy in the uh, tech department. Matthew's gonna join me very quick. Uh I think starting next week, Matthew's gonna be doing some lives. In the live videos, we're gonna start doing uh more comprehensive presentations. Not a, not a lot of freestyles like this. Uh, we're going to start using the live platform more like a lot of other channels do, and we'll be set up. This is this is this studio here is is basically going to be relegated to a base my office. It's just my little old video office. I'll do videos from time to time from here, but we're gonna we're gonna have a much larger studio, much larger uh, room. Um, I'm just waiting on him. I think he, I think he'll be here in about a week. Uh, Matthew will be full-time archaics, and that's going to free me from a lot of the tech and admin things that have been holding me back. Truthfully, I've told you guys in the past, and I know you, I know you believe me, because around the time I had 100 videos, I was telling you guys I got at least 500 more videos in me. And now that I have 340-something videos, I promise you I still have 500 videos in me. But what holds me back more than anything in the world is my inability to wrap my mind around new technologies, new developments in, in YouTube, uh, the, the software I have to learn. It's, it's, I'm a content creator, and that content comes from years and years of research and data mining. 
as you, as many of you know. And I would love to put out a video every single day and just blow people's minds, uh, uh, just just show all these amazing mathematical correlates with ancient to, mar to relatively contemporary history. I would love to do that on a daily basis. I can't do it when I have to take on all these other admin responsibilities as well. So I'm really I'm really looking forward to Matt joining the team permanently and uh that's gonna that's gonna change archaics fundamentally we're gonna move forward a lot at a much faster pace and i know that's gonna piss off some people you know i've already got other channels angry with me and i'm, I'm i've moved beyond that i really don't care it's uh youtube is a youtube is a fickle family believe that I, and you know what not even worried about it anymore so i got my archaics family right here so I can't really think of any other announcements before I start fielding questions. I will tell you in my personal life, I uh, had another building installed. Yes, I do plan. Yes, I do plan to get on my motorcycle and do videos. 100%. Here's the GoPro right here. I'm going to do it. Um, also, van vlogs. I'm going to do an entire video showing you how we put my van together before and after pictures. You're not going to believe. You guys have seen my van in my van vlogs. In my van vlogs, you've seen the entire time that I was working Paradise Rock Gardens as a as a leading a contractor crew, and we were doing flagstone. You guys, my you guys have been around. You you remember those videos? I've never taken those videos down. Me driving around, totally dirty contractor van has completely been refurbished. You will not recognize that van. The entire interior of the van has been redone in solid wood. And uh, we're done. We're finished with it. I'm going to do a video on it. Uh, last night, we finished putting up the LED lighting for the inside. Uh, I have diamond plate put on the back doors. Uh, I have dark metal mesh uh, black paneling that's been put on the van windows. This is the Archaics Mobile Suite. Uh, I will be doing videos. I will be traveling, you know, basically right here. Texas is huge. I don't know how much further outside of Texas I'm going to travel, but I don't know. I, I really don't know. But this is this van is being outfitted to be able to be able to do uh, basically mobile, just a mobile mobile studio suite. Uh, you'll like it. Pretty soon I'll release that video. Uh, it's just uh, it's all about timing. Once I have Matt on the team, I'm going to be free. I'm going to be free to do some of my van vlogs, drive around like you used to. I'll be free to do my motorcycle uh, uh, recordings so you guys can see as I'm riding around and I'll do a video on my bike. It's just, I, I just need that free time. And in order to get that free time, I need the help. Thank you, Isk. Thank you guys for the donations. Really appreciate it. Always put it to good use. Um, let's see. We've got a lot of activity in the chat. Oh, and another thing that happened to me in my personal life, really, really interesting. Uh, you guys know my past. You guys know. Who, who have watched my videos. I've been very open. I have videos that show me as a teenager and as a little kid in elementary school. I have videos that show my life as, as I've gone different jobs. And then there's this huge period of time where I don't have any pictures for I was in prison. But uh, something happened to me last night that was very interesting. Uh, in eighth grade, I, I disappeared. I never gave my schoolmates. They never knew. Because I, what was going on at home, I kept from them. You guys know I ran away at 15. I have, I, I have not been home since. I just, I packed up everything, put it in, put it in, put everything that was important to me in a backpack, and I hitchhiked to Tulsa, Oklahoma, from uh, Bedford, Texas. And uh, I never explained it to anybody at school what I was going through at home. Uh, I, ne I, I never brought, ever brought anybody from school to my home. Uh, but anyway, it's that's either here or there. The members, the the members of my of my school, I just to them, I just vanished. They had no idea what happened to me. There were they knew by virtue of my brother and sister, their friends, two grades below, that I had run away. They knew that I had basically become a criminal. You know, I had been seen a few times in, in the area when I had come back into town and then I'd leave again. For two years, I was on the streets before I, I was convicted of felonies that sent me to prison. Now, I had a, uh, last night, I got a random email and it took me back. And it was, it was from basically my very best friend growing up. 
we did a skit in either third grade or fifth grade. One of them, we did a skit together in front of class where we did some acting and all that. I never forgot that. And then he and I were friends, and we kind of drifted apart until junior high school. And then in junior high school, he and I just really clicked, seventh and eighth grade. I knew his little brother. I'm not going to name him here, but uh, really good people. And uh, we know a lot of the same people at that time. And we still know the same names because he mentioned them in the email. It really shocked me, took me back. And uh, that's what's been going on in my mind today is it's a blast from the past. I'm 49 years old. My own neighborhood doesn't even know what happened to me. I left and I've never looked back. I've always felt kind of bad about that, but you know what? It is what it is. Uh, but I'm glad he reached out to me. I'm going to call him. He sent me his number. I'm going to call him, touch base, see how he and his little brother are doing and, and uh, other people in the neighborhood. But I'm pretty sure by now that word has spread through my old neighborhood. Uh, Harwood Junior High and Trinity High School. I'm pretty sure a word is spreading right now or will be by the end of the day uh, what happened to Jason and where Jason is today. So I think that's pretty interesting. I'll talk to him later. So let's get into this video. Lots of things to talk about. But, but let's see what you guys... We've got the Netherlands here. All right. I'm, I'm going all the way up to, as far as I can because you, YouTube won't let me go all the way to the top. Uh, let's see. I do need to let you guys know uh, if my mods aren't already doing so. They probably are. Hey, Jahara. Listen, if you want me to address a question, the best way to catch my attention is put it in all capital letters. If it's not in all capital letters, I'm going to pass over it, assuming that you guys are talking to each other. So, <clears throat> Laura Taylor, how do you set up a personal field that heals a chronic, intractable illness? Okay, Laura, in, in prior presentations and videos, in videos, I tell a story about something very real that happened right in front of me. It shocked me. When a guy from Guatemala or El Salvador, one of those Central American countries, he was in prison with me. He didn't speak very good English, but he was diagnosed with tuberculosis and it was chronic and he had had it for a long time before he had been diagnosed. He was, he was depressed at first when, when, when uh, his test came back positive for it and he had told several of the Hispanic guys on the cell block and I was there to witness this. He was also very... Uh, he was Roman Catholic. He was very, very uh, religious. He was always reading his Bible, and uh, I know, I know, there's a negative stig stigma. There's a stigma attached to old oh, guys in prison being religious and Bible. Listen, a lot of guys in prison are not religious. I promise you, I was there. A lot of guys are pieces, are POSs, uh, no good. So I, I encouraged that when I when I saw that in prison, that guys were trying to better themselves. Now, this guy. You're asking me how to create your own informed field to heal yourself or maybe even affect the healing in someone else? This guy did it. It's incurable. Once you have tuberculosis and it's already taking over all your lungs and it's, it's, it's an advanced state in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, they don't give you special medical treatment. They give you the basic medicines that they give everybody else that has the same thing. And if you live, you live. If you die, you die. But that's going to be decided in a quarantine tank where you are going to be surrounded with every single other individual who is incarcerated that is suffering from basically the same thing that you've been diagnosed with. These are death tanks. They have them in Texas prison. So he, once he was diagnosed, he knew he was about to be transferred. He knew that he was going to go to one of these places. That man told his own buddies, his Hispanic buddies, to quit praying over him, to get away from him. He cleared his own personal space. He ignored everybody around him. He didn't want to hear no sympathy. He, he spoke enough English to understand me and other people. And he just basically went into prayer. He put his Bible aside. He went into prayer. And the other Hispanic guys basically let us know what the dude did. Because we watched it. He basically 
told God that he wasn't going to accept an early demise and that he had plans and he had things that he had to do. Dying was not an option. Therefore, he asked God to bless a bottle of water and he was going to drink it and he needed to be able to piss out everything in his body that didn't belong. So this was his reasoning. He had sit there and prayed and blessed this bottle for hours that night, then drank it and went to sleep. I'm going to tell you now, that was one of the most unusual nights that I have ever experienced. And nothing happened to me. I just observed this. Now, I told this story in a prior video. I don't know which video it was. I have so many. But this man began to stink. He began to reek. And it was so fetid. It was so foul. I, re I remember taking uh, air fresheners and 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 uh, from the SSIs and hitting a rag or a handkerchief and putting it over my deal. Cause I live, I live a few bunks away from him and it was terrible. He sweat out. I don't know if you ever pissed or not, but he sweat out this yellow mucus stuff all over him. Guys were coming over. Hispanic guys were coming over all night with rags and towels and wiping his body. I, I'm getting sick talking about it. I'm a, uh, Yeah. This mucus was wiped off of his body, his head, his face. It came out of his pores. It was yellow mucus. It was all over his body. It stank his sheets. His clothes had to be cut, removed off of him. He shivered all night, and the man woke up with no energy in the morning. His buddies helped him shower, washed him off, gave him clean linens, brought him some fresh towels to lay on. The next day, he just drank a couple bottles of water, started eating a little food. He slept for about, about three or four days before they came to get him. And they did. Once you're already on that list, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, stopping it just because now you claim you're okay. Yeah. Once the, once the ball gets rolling in the Texas department of criminal justice, it's over with, he was on the chain. So he, he left, he went to John Seeley hospital in Galveston where he was going to a tuberculosis tank. He went there and came back about three weeks later. He was shipped right back to our unit. He was full. He was full of the spirit. He was jovial. He was happy. Now, you can claim all day long that the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the Virgin Mary, or God healed that man. I'm going to argue that point, but, it, but it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter what your perspective is as to what, who healed him or what healed him. It's what he did. He basically created his own, he empowered his own informed field. He, in, he, he, he created the information in his auric field that it's not his time to go. He refuses that diagnosis. And what's in his body may be there temporarily, but this water is going to flush it out. And then with absolute faith in that everything that he had spoken and believed was going to come to pass, the man went to sleep and woke up healed. Now, we, I'm not, it wasn't a simple, it wasn't a simple matter. He stank to high heaven and we all suffered for it on that cell block because it, it was, he reeked bad, but, but you know what? He came through it. He came back to our unit. Absolutely. heals a true story. Little, little short guy out of, out of El Salvador or Guatemala or something. He was deported. He went back to his country after he finished his prison sentence, but he went back to his country alive and well, and he didn't have TV no, anymore. That's a true story. You want to know how to heal? You got you to come up with your own, you have to come up with your own ideas on how that's going to happen. But the simulacrum that we live within is a neutral field. It doesn't work against you. It works for you. Unfortunately, you work against yourself over and over and over, and it reflects those things back as circumstances. Remember, the simulacrum is a neutral field. It is not your enemy, but it very well can be your friend. Do not, do not confuse the simulacrum, which is a neutral field of holography that provides this beautiful construct that we're living in. Don't confuse it with artificial intelligence X. Dungeon programming, negative default programming, the very strictures that guide and control the collective. Don't confuse the two. They are fundamentally different. And the way you interact with them are different as well. One's a builder protocol and one's a destroyer. One sows chaos and one maintains order. All right, let's see. All right. How do you set up? Okay, I read that one. Green is from the Netherlands. Yeah, I got all kinds of, got a wide variety of people that listen.
Hey, baby, Ben Pullman, I got your email. I believe I responded to one of them. Uh, what you're doing is good work. I appreciate it. Uh, making Chronicon editable is gonna is going to allow me to go in very quickly and put the necessary inserts. Because uh, uh, Chronicon, as you've seen, all many of you have, have downloaded the Chronicon off Podia, and it's a uh, it's 1,500 pages now. So it's a uh, it's a lot. It's a lot I have to insert and go in there and redact a few things, and I have to tone down a few things. But all, all in all, Chronicon's done. I just got to add all that stuff. So thank you for making that editable because it's exactly what I'm going to do. The Simpsons is the best predictor. It's not a show that I really ever got into, The Simpsons. You know what? You guys already know I'm half redneck. Hank Hill, I've gotten into Hank Hill way more than I ever got The, the Simpsons. Thank you, Annie Bulmer. Honey Badger. Hmm. I'm looking for all caps, so I know y'all are talking to me. Total. All right. You guys got some total utter nutter. Crazy name. What can you tell us about the Colburn Bible? I do have one video about the Colburn Bible because the Colburn Bible is fantastic. It is a recent discovery. I was very surprised that in all my research for all these years, over two decades, that I was able to put together this entire thesis and publish seven, well not publish, I've written 17 books of which seven of them have been published. I can't believe that I've never come across the Colburn Bible until out after I was out of prison and other people educated to me to the existence of this text. And then I read the whole thing and I provided a very good comprehensive video on the Colburn Bible because it addresses things that are found in the Old Testament, but from a very unbiased perspective. The Colburn Bible's version of the Exodus events and the doom shape, the, the appearance of the angel of death in the sky, the ten plagues over Egypt, the Colburn Bible version reads as something that is quite, it's almost like reading the event as it really happened as opposed to the biblical version which was, which it was glamorized. The Colburn Bible's fantastic. The Phoenix object that I have documented so much in published books and in and, and playlists, the Phoenix object, it's in the Colburn Bible multiple times, perfectly described. The resets Phoenix causes is absolutely elucidated with perfection in the Colburn Bible. It's uh, in the Colburn Bible, it is called the doom shape. And I agree. That's exactly how Phoenix would have been regarded in ancient times. Remember, Ancients called it the angel of death every time it appeared in the sky. So, yeah, the Colburn Bible is fantastic. I like it. I put it on par with the Oralind, the Dutch Oralind, which I have back here on my shelf. The, the Oralind manuscript. Uh, there, I mean, the Colburn Bible, the Oralind manuscript, Mother Shipton's prophecies, these share a common denominator with another text called the, uh, uh, the Book of Jasher. All of these texts are argued well, first of all, let me, let, me, let me go back a little bit. All of these texts were highly uh, researched and were objects of fascinations to early scholarship when they were originally found. Modern scholarship, higher criticism, denounces them all. But what's really interesting is they share a common denominator. Mother Shipton's prophecies, the book of Jasher, the Ora Lind manuscript, the Colburn Bible. There are others I haven't mentioned on my channel, but the common denominator is they all, all go into a lot of detail about the Phoenix phenomenon. So Colburn Bible is great. If you, get, if you have access, I think you can get free PDFs. You can get free PDFs somewhere. I, I would if I was you. Uh, Kim Trails. Kim Trails isn't anything I can discuss. It's not anything that I can find in the historical record. Yeah, if I have to use the internet in order to research something, I can't rehash that information and put it back out to you guys. If you guys have access to data on the internet, I assure you, you're probably not going to hear it from archaics, at least not from my historical presentations. I am a chronologist. That is exactly how I, I have publicized myself to be. And I'm not, I can't, I can't, there's no historical data about chemtrails. 
So I, I really don't know. I don't. I don't research the modern stuff like that. So turn close this a little bit. All right. I just don't know anything about chemtrails. I think Enki was just a title, and it is Lord of the Earth. It's just a title. I don't know what his real name is, but he was the architect, so therefore, and he did disappear into the sky, just like Enoch, so I'm pretty sure that that uh, the same personality or somebody fulfilling the same office. Remember, in the Old Testament, we have several historical figures that seem to appear over centuries in totally different narratives at different time periods, but the name Agag was an Amalekite king. But we find out from the archaeological record and modern historians who have who have who have who have basically put all this together that Agag was a was a throne name, meaning the ruler would have had all kinds of names that were known to the people, but when he was ruling on the throne, he was Agag. And this was very popular in ancient cultures. Some kings would have their milk name, their family, their family name, crest, their dynastic name, what dynasty they were a part of. They would have a throne. They would have a throne name, uh, and then they would have epithets that were given to them for particular accomplishments. So this is the problem we have with the hyperinflated uh, pharaonic. Uh, uh, chronologies. Many of the different names that have been attributed to all these pharaohs in the past, they were lined up as if there was, you know, 30 pharaohs during this short little period of time. And it's not. It was eight men, and those eight men had 30 different names. One of them had 11 names. One of them had three names. One of them had two names. Another one, another one had six names. Another one had nine names. And we, we come to find out that these same figures were known by many different names. Look at Nimrod. Nimrod was the same way. In, a, in Akkad, the same person that was in Babylon called Marduk, in, in Akkad was called Merodach. But in the older Sumer, Sumerian cities, he was called Amar Udaak. Later on, just a few centuries later, the Hebrews called him Nimrod. Others called him Mardon. So, yeah, it's the same. It's the same name, same syllables. It's the same roots. It means to rebel. Excuse me. This same guy in the book of Jasher had a new name attributed to him when Keto Laramor of Elam conquered Babylonia and, and, and made Nimrod bend the knee. The new name was Amraphel, and it said in the book of Jasher that Nimrod was named Amraphel by his people because it's in Semitic. It literally means he made us fall. So I'm just I'm just mentioning these, these things to illustrate a point. You ask about Enki. Enki just means Lord of the Earth. We don't know the guy's real name. We don't know we don't know much about him other than the fact that he was a benefactor. He was an architect. He was highly intelligent. He was a mathematician. Uh, uh, he was the number of secrets. Many titles were bestowed upon this individual. So, uh, yeah, he was definitely a benefactor. All right. So with the new studio that's been setting, be, being set up, I have all my art supplies. I got all, I've got my new drawing deal. You guys are going to see videos of me drawing these charts that you, that's, that you have pretty, pretty much become familiar with in archaics. I'm going to draw all new charts, totally explaining all this mathematical construct that we discussed so many times. I want you to see it. And I want, I want to be able to pinpoint anything on that chart and tell you exactly where this information comes and how it's relative forward and backward in time to these other relative events. And we, and we can use the charts and just keep going forward and backward in time. And we can see the layering and we can take 21 different ancient and modern calendars and superimpose themselves on paper. And this chart will just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I want y'all, I want to record this entire process so we can put a legend on it in the side margin, an extensive legend of what these, this is the Phoenix transit. This is Nemesis X object. This is a Mayan Bactin of 144,000 days. You understand? This is the fall of the Hittites, fall of the Amorites, fall of the Hyksos, fall of the Egypt, Egyptian uh, uh, um, 
oh, uh, such and such dynasty. We can go through the fall of the seven kings. Here's the rise of here's the rise of Ilium. Here's the Trojan War. Here's the fall of Ilium. We can put all this on this chart and just build this massive chart to where I can do whole videos just looking at different parts of the chart and just take you through through world history forward and backward in time in a visual presentation unlike any you've ever seen. It's very easy to do. All those charts that I've already shown you guys was drawn on typing paper with a pen when I was in prison. Oh, there goes my puppy. Imagine what I'm going to do now, now that I have all the, I have all the tools that I need. I have everything. Oh, I've got all kinds of compasses and templates that I can use and rules, rules and different types of mechanical pencils, I, graph paper that I've never had access to, micrograph, really good stuff, good lighting. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to provide some charts that are going to blow your mind. It's all, uh, that's, that's on the menu. So let's see. Also, I have some, also I have some more podcasts coming with groups that I have never heard of before. Just a uh, larger channels that are just, I guess, reaching down and. Uh, I got, I, I've got a lot of support. I got more support than, you know, I got a lot of people, man, that, that are say, Hey man, you know what? We're really proud of you for weathering the storm. You know, there's a bunch of assholes out there. Just ignore them. They said, uh, we like to reach down. We like to, we like to reach out to you, man, and, and, and do, do, a, do a podcast. So I've got some, uh, I've got some interesting, interesting, uh, talks coming up. And like I said, I like those paranormies. We've already, we're already talking about doing a second one with the paranormies. All right, let me see here. Already passed the chemtrails up. I just received when the sun darkens. All right. That's another thing I got on the menu. I still have to read the second part of that audio book. The first part of when the sun darkens is already on my channel. The second part is what I got to do next. And when Matthew joins me, also, well, I also have time to... Uh, Several of you have emailed me and, and beat me up in emails talking about the Phalorn saga. Um, for those of you who don't know, I wrote a fantasy. I wrote a dark fantasy epic. Huge. Talking about it's like this big, full of writing. It's huge. I don't even know how many books it would be if it was published. But I wrote a, I wrote, it's called the Phalorn saga. And I basically wrapped up all my beliefs in a fantasy narrative. Uh, it's a fairy apocalypse, but the fairies and the supernatural creatures that are in my story are ones that I invented. They're not really standard to fairy lore and all that. So it's uh there are some, but that are familiar. But anyway, I'm I'm gonna I have a different channel already set up. Uh I I have a I have an archaics backup channel, but I haven't put anything on it yet. But I also have a channel for the Phalorn uh saga, and I'm gonna do the readings for all my fantasy books. And uh, I'm not, it's not going to be, I'm not charging for it. It's, they're just going to be on there for anybody who's interested. Uh, who knows? Maybe a Hollywood producer will see it someday and say, hey man, this will make an excellent series of movies. So, you know, whatever happens, happens. I just want y'all to read them. All right, let's see here. I'm looking for big ones. Thank you, Honey Badger. Crypto Jack Black. That's a new one. Tarzanagram. All right, let's see. I'm looking for all capitals. Cheryl Williams is asking where everybody's at. Oh, yeah, let's address. Hey, let's address September 23rd real quick. The last live video I did, remember all the hype. Remember all the comments. Remember, I told you guys all the emails and all the YouTube videos just going off about what's going to happen September 23rd. Not a damn thing happened September 23rd. I've been telling you guys since the last two videos I did on the Carrington event that we're looking for an event that happens in September of 2023. And... These drops have been noticed and widely published since 2014. Remember in that last video I showed on Carrington event that in 2014 and 2015, they these people were starting to release all these YouTube videos saying, look at all these movies. And all these movies are talking about, look at this. 
923, 923, 923. And it was assumed that in 2014, it was going to happen. It was assumed again in 2015. By 2016, people quit looking. They were, they were, they were already fed up with it, but some watched for it and it didn't happen. 2017, nothing happened. 2018, nothing happened. Now, now nobody's even looking for any events in, in, uh, uh, so on 923. So then all of a sudden 2020 comes around and nobody can even think about that anymore because the world's locked down and something else is happening. So, this is the same scenario that unfolded in 2010 and 2011 when all, when hundreds of books were being published. And I, I know you guys don't don't want to get beat up with this over over and over and over again. I mean, I'm the only guy that had a book published explaining that nothing was going to happen in 2012, while hundreds of books were all saying that they that they were. So what what I would discuss me is where are you at now? All of you that were publishing those videos on, on something happening right here in September of 2022, where are you at now? Well, what happened? So the same thing with the with the Mayan long count. Do you have any idea how much money they made on those on those books in for 2012? Popular authors you all know right now. Some of them I got on my shelf. We're talking about 2012. Nothing ever happened. Not one author has come forward and say, hey, man, we got all this wrong. You know, it's, you know what, this guy right here, maybe we need to pay attention to this guy, Jason. Let's look at his math because he says the Mayan long count can't possibly end in 2012. It ends in 2046. And he shows us the, these arithmetic tables as to how he derives that. It's very easy. So what I'm saying is, is, is it's really easy to get caught up in the hype. Because that's most of the time all it is. It's 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 hype, and uh, I was really hoping that uh we I'd get some type of videos. I'm still seeing them pop up on my YouTube feed about uh, 923. They're still popping up, even though it's well over. It's it's done. It's two days old now, but nothing happened. So it's just it gets old. It gets really old. Anyway, and I don't mind the predictions. Predictions don't bother me at all. Predictions do not bother me at all when when it is shown that they're coming from a viable construct that can be demonstrated. What gets me is the hype when somebody just throws something else out there and then everybody jumps on board and wow, here's the check this out. And then it, all this distraction happens and it's totally anticlimactic. It happens over and over. Yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoyed that video. Yeah, co cosmic consciousness. You know what? Uh, that was arranged six months in advance. I told uh, it kind of slipped my mind. Then they then they contacted me. Ed and Mag, thank you. I, it just kind of slipped my mind. Then they contacted me like, oh man, I forgot all about that. But but you know it doesn't. You know I I don't need to prepare for any videos. You guys already know that. I just shoot from the hip. Let's see. So they're wild, wild woods. Hey, there's supposed to be a big earthquake prediction in Texas right now. Yeah, I don't know about that one. But then again, I, I then again, guys, I'm just not. I don't watch the news unless I have to. Oh, I'm already on number 74, and I'm not done. I all since last night and all day, I have gone through all my predictions videos, and I have isolated every single thing I have predicted through isometric projections and date sequence predictive analytics. I want you guys to see. Now, many of you have sent me emails and sent me comments saying, hey, man, this happened on this day. This happened. Hey, man, you're right about And you know what? I just couldn't keep up. I don't know, but I'm hoping some of y'all can fill this in for me because I'm, I've am i created a chart and I'm going to publish it on YouTube, but I created a chart. I'm only on 74. I think I got quite a ways to go. It might be as, it might be as, as many as a hundred predictions, but I'm on number 74 right now and I'll be done before the, before, after when I finish this, this live video, I'm going right back to it. I'm going to pu publish those predictions. I'm on the 74th one right now. It's a, they're all one liners. This is exactly what was predicted. Right next to it is the date. It says this is date of prediction. This is when it was posted on YouTube that this was going to happen in 2021 or 2022 or 2023. Now, uh, the 
what I want you guys to fill out, because I know a lot of you have those details. You've sent them to me in the past, and I've read them when when these individual things have come to pass. Hey, man, when in your country, because some of them were for Switzerland, some of them for Romania, some of them were for Canada, some of them were for Australia, uh, some of them were for Thailand, the Dominican Republic. I've done predictions videos on a bunch of countries. So I just can't keep up with all the variables. All I can do is keep up with what was predicted and show you when and where it was predicted. So I hope you guys like like the list and, and and you're able to fill in those details. Maybe maybe we need to set up a website somewhere. I know some of y'all are technically capable of doing that. Uh, maybe a poster or a page you can set up somewhere and we can just fill the whole chart out. I don't know. Uh, I know some of you guys have great ideas. I am tech retarded. Do not ask me to put together something like that. I will provide you the data and the chart. I don't know how to do all that other stuff. So anyway, micro crochet. Oh, that's a uh, Babette again. Do you know tedious proofreaders for me? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Man, you, you took on a hell of a project. Trying to make Chronicon editable. Did you guys see the new video I just posted on in the posts? It's not on my channel. I posted it in, in the in the posts. Oh, uh, I I can't remember who did it. I I Chrome's released a video where they took my dark my dark realities uh uh video, but they put new graphics with it and put verbal a woman's voice with it and. It's just so much better than what I presented. It is really good. So I, I posted it as a post on my channel for you. For It's really good to explain what Archaics is about. They did a good job of that. Lindsay Konoski. Jason, oh, you flirting with me. <laughs> Jason, you good looking man. Well, you know what? I do try. Thank you. Monica Farrow, my old friend. Probably still driving that tractor. Monica, I know you like this audio is a whole lot better. You can hear you can hear over that engine. Monica stayed behind and weathered two hurricanes back to back in in Louisiana. Get them, Pamela. Somebody's somebody's acting bad. Get them. You know me. I got zero tolerance, man. This is this is this is like I like the way I like J Dreamers attitude. This is the good vibe, good vibe tribe. If you don't like it, get out. I like that. I like, I, yeah, I've got zero tolerance. You introduce any negativity, you're gone, man. Don't email me begging to get back in. I, I, it's not even in my nature. I do not move backwards. I, I move forwards. Same thing with the, with the Facebook group. The Facebook... I used to run that Facebook group like, like a tight ship. I just, you know what? My 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 admins and moderators in the Facebook group archaics, they're just tired. And I get it. I get it because people are assholes. I totally understand. So I even told them recently, I said, you know what, man, if you guys, if this is too much, and uh, you know what? I, I I'm I'm cool with just archiving the group or or just deleting it off Facebook. To me, Facebook is like the asshole of social social programming. It's a uh, social media. I, I can't stand it. I don't like it. I don't even like getting on it. I feel dirty when I'm on it. It's a uh, yeah. I don't like Facebook. I don't like Facebook at all. Yeah, you're right. I'm real close to fifty thousand. Somebody predicted that shoot a couple months ago. Yeah, sure. You're right. Real close. Tarzanagram, what is the outlook for the coast of Ireland? Ireland 2040 asking for a friend. You ain't asking for a friend. You better stop that. We shoot straight here in archaics. All right, listen. Um, epicenter, the epicenter is 30 degrees north latitude of the equator at Giza. This is what you have to understand. Anybody can pretty much ascertain by looking at a map. It doesn't matter what projection you use because the phenomena is going to be the same result. You can take you can take a Mercator projection map or you can take a flat earth map. You can take any any other variety of maps in between and you put the pin on 30 degrees north latitude which is the exact location 
of the Great Pyramid in Egypt. Your pin needs to go there because the center of motion is going to be there. The Great Pyramid in Egypt is not going to move. It's going to turn. So, so that the uh, Sphinx will no longer be facing east. It will face north by the time the, the motion is done. What this does to the rest of the world is it means that the closer you are to the epicenter, the less of the less topographical uh, changes are going to occur. The further you are away from the epicenter, the greater the centrifugal motion, the greater the changes are going to be. If the Giza, the Great Pyramid, is the dead center of the turning, then that means... North America is going to take the place of the equatorial zone. We're talking about the United States area is going to be on the equator. Central America is going to take, take, take most of South America's place. More than 50% of South America is going straight into the torrid zone, absolutely freezing, while Canada takes the place of the United States, which means that that the Arctic region is going to be shoved into the place of Canada. That's in this hemisphere. On this side of the circle, everything is going to move like that. But on the other side of the circle, Great Pyramids in the middle, we have Australia and New Zealand area just moving north 30 degrees. China's going straight into Siberia. Much of Asia is going straight into Siberia. Russia is going to become the new Arctic. This whole turning area. All Africa is going to do is it's just going to turn maybe 15 degrees. The closer you are to the epicenter, the less damage there will be in, in, in what is going to be a simulated pole shift. So I hope that helps. If you're, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, though. If you're anywhere near a coastline, you need to be about 500, 500 feet above, above sea level because the seas will become tumultuous. The problem with lithospheric displacement is that water doesn't move at the same speed as a land surface. So if the lithosphere all of a sudden shifts 30 degrees over maybe a, a, a 10, uh, an 8 to 10 hour area, it's moving at hundreds and hundreds of miles an hour. It's not going to feel like it if we're on there, but it's go but it's going to feel like it to bodies of water, which are not going to maintain that speed. The land just starts moving. Bodies of water sit still and then just rise up as land moves up underneath them and shoves them in the air or they go down. So we can be standing right here, 30 degrees north latitude, spring, Texas, uh, 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 north of Houston, and we can just watch. We don't have to go to the coast in 2040. We can just stand uh, uh, in sp around the spring around the spring area north of Houston, which is 30 degrees north latitude. We can stand right there and just look to the south, and we will see a tsunami engulf Houston. We will see that tsunami come all the way to spring Texas and probably wash out spring Texas as well. But it's not the Gulf of Mexico that's moving. It's the land we're standing on. So that's lithospheric displacement. Water is the greatest, it's the greatest damage, but it's not, it's not what you think. It's the water's not moving. It takes it takes it takes days, sometimes weeks, for the water to to catch up. And that washout create creates more tsunamis, more fallout. It's just it's terrible. So yeah. You need to be inland and you need to be about 500, 500 feet above sea level wherever you are and you'll be okay. But uh, 2040, Nostradamus predicts the, the disappearance of New York, uh, uh, even infers that London will disappear. Uh, yeah, it's going to be, they're not the only ones. Other cities, other cities will on the coast will disappear too. Those are just two of the oldest and most prominently well-known international cities. All right. Still got a ways to go, guys. 2040 is still a ways to go. 17 more years. A lot's going to happen before then, I promise you. I don't know who the Tengu are uh, outside the mountains of Japan. This must be something new, Abdul. This is some new news. You guys, you guys really don't understand how, how separate, separated I am from modern culture. 
you know, I mean, people make references all the time right here on on a uh, on YouTube to characters, television shows, authors of other books. I am I have lived in a bubble almost all of my life, just learning and. Anything that hasn't entered that bubble, I have no knowledge of. And people, I have to send emails to people a lot to educate me. And then I find out, okay, you're talking about a cartoon character. I don't know who Beavis and Butthead is until somebody told me. And in the era of time, I was in prison that entire time. So uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of authors, and there's especially a tremendous amount of YouTube channels I'm unfamiliar with. I'm vaguely getting familiar with them and, and I have an idea what they're because so many people ask me over and over and over, hey, do you know this guy here? Like like one that's really big on my radar now is uh I never heard of the guy before, don't know anything about him, have never had any desire to even do podcasts until recently, uh this year when I started uh with Santos Bonacci and all them. But uh the guy Matt of Quantum of Consciousness, okay, I listened to one of his videos. Uh, the day before yesterday, because I've got five or six emails all telling me, hey, man, this guy here, this guy, listen, I'm not looking for attention. You know what I mean, I don't mind talking to people and, and exchanging notes because I already told you guys in the past, I do these podcasts because I know that it provides value and that I know that in the end, those blessings are going to return to me. That's the way I live my life. I know that I can sacrifice two to three hours of my time for a YouTube presentation, but I know that when I'm done with that presentation and I go off doing other things that I want to do, that blessing just keeps giving back to me because I know that that value, which is forever until YouTube cancels it, is there for other people to enjoy. And six, seven, eight months, two years later, people are still learning and, and deriving value from videos that I have forgotten about and I'm cool with that. So I do these podcasts with all these people and because it doesn't cost me anything but a little bit of time. And but when I but when people are all barraging me with all these hey maybe you check out this I listen to them. I don't necessarily answer all the emails, but I'll go check it out or I'll click on to the email that they sent and then I forget to respond to them and thank them for sending me, sending me in that direction because I got so engrossed in listening to some guy's presentation. So when it comes so please quit sending me the, the emails about Matt. My opinion, love the guy. Down to earth. I told you guys, I don't really care about somebody's information so much as their personality. If I'm resonating on somebody's frequency, I fall in love with personalities. Everything else can be forgiven about them after that. But he, I, I'm resonating with him. I like it. I'm going to listen to some other, other presentations. But I, I also have this fear that, and I've told you guys many times, I fear cross-pollination. I fear that... I don't need people in the future to look back and say, oh, well, well Archaic's got this idea from this one and this one. I've already been accused of that from these guys, FPV Angel. I've never watched an FPV Angel video in my life. I don't have time. I got other things to do. I'm, I, I'm too busy creating. I got original material. I got hundreds of videos of original material. I don't need, I don't need it. And, I, and my original material has sources that no one else is citing. So I, I, there's no way I, th I stole anything from these guys. They're accusing me of this this BS, but I've already put it. I'm just mentioning it as a, a, a tan, tangentially right now. When it comes to Matt of quantum of consciousness, consciousness, I agree with you guys. He and I, he and I should do a podcast in the future. I'm just in no rush to, but I like his message. I don't know it all yet. I'm going to listen to some more videos, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm feeling that, but that's because of his personality. I may not agree with the particulars of his thesis. I don't know yet. I got to listen to more. But yeah, these other clowns, I'm not even worried about them anymore. I mean, I can't get, I can't allow myself to go into beast mode. Guys, I have been a warrior most of my life and I can, I can introduce you to many people that will tell you this. And I don't need to get, I don't need that psychological switch to, to go off in me to where I just, you know what, man, I'm fed up with these guys. I isolate a channel. I spend three weeks going through all their presentations. I create a whole list of of data sets and go through their material, man, and then dissect them and then completely make them look like the buffoons they are. And I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm talking about if I decided to ever isolate a channel and just, and just show you what a real critical analysis is. So I have no desire to do that to anybody. I got too much original good material that I need to share the value on. And I can't do that if I'm attacking somebody. If I'm attacking somebody, I am not helping somebody else. So 
That's the that's that's the deal here. That's why I'm ignoring a lot of this BS because it's going to fade away. If if you're going to spend your whole life trying to prove negatives and talk bad about other people, then you're never going to move anywhere in life at all. And the informed feel that you create for yourself is going to be understood by other people that oh, well, you're just a jealous loser and uh, you really hate the guy because he's successful and you're not. So I'm just going to call it like it is, like like I see it. So. This uh, other people are equally intelligent or more intelligent than I am, and they can read through this. And this is why in the past two months, I have received such high quality members. A lot of the people coming to my channel are over average intelligence, and they're coming to my channel because they get caught up in this hate mongering on these other channels about archaics, and they see the negative comments in other channels, and, and they want to investigate. And they click onto a video, and they come here, and they find something that they weren't anticipating finding and they find value, and then they stick around, then they're in the comment sections, then they befriend me, then they send me emails, some of them donate. I have no problem with the attacks, because it's like spiritual alchemy. The more they come against me, the more they're providing me valuable members. So people who really do want to know, know the truth, and I'm not saying I have a copyright or I've cornered the market on the truth. All I'm saying is, is that Jason's truths can be quantified and demonstrated. That doesn't mean I know everything. So anyway, just enter, you guys know I entertain tangents. I just wanted to say that because it's a mat of quantum of conscience. Conscious is consciousness is definitely somebody I would be on board with talking to in the future. Right now, I'm just busy as hell. But yeah, I like the guy. So you can quit sending me emails about it. Mm, let's see. All right. I don't see any questions, guys. Going through this thread, all caps, IBM AIX is an operating system for the 70s for mainframes. Still available. Wow. AIX, huh? My Potato Munchkin. Now, that's a very interesting handle. Is there any historical records on biblical astronomy? Are there any historical records on biblical astronomy? The only, the only association to biblical astronomy that I can make right now is the book of Job, where it mentions several star patterns and constellations. Interestingly, the book of Job is believed by academics to be the oldest written text incorporated in the Bible. It's also, I think, Nabatean or Sabatean. This is ain't it's this is gonna get this is gonna get you here. The people who originally had this ancient text weren't even Jewish, they weren't even Hebrew, they weren't even Babylonian. They were the occupants of an ancient underground city called Petra. But uh, that's the only, I don't really know much about it. Santos Bonacci is an authority on astrology. I am not. I don't know hardly anything about it. It's uh, that's astrology has never been my thing. Okay, so I got some questions here. Open your reality. Yeah, I remember doing that. All right. Haters are secretly your biggest fans. <laughs> Thank you, Jahara.
Great moment. We'll figure that out when we do this list. With the NFL, I used to publish all the NFL week, week after week after week on Archaics. That's how I got a bunch of members for my beta testing for Office, my games here. Yeah, we were hitting in between 87 and 93% accuracy week after week after week, predicting all, all 16. Well, how sometimes there was bye weeks, so there was only 15 games. But I was, did that for a while. But uh, though that's a the sports is a different mathematical construct. The socio political deals they got probably got a hundred predictions out there. A lot of the predictions are very close to each other. They're very relative, and some of the predictions are just like so far out there. There's no way anybody could have really just predicted it. You have to be, have to be looking at something like I do, like isometric projections. It's not just something I pulled out of my head. And uh, the associations like between different isometric years are just phenomenal. Other people have started channels showing isometric projections, showing way more than I've ever shown. But I've never been scared to do predictions. I've never, I've never feared the the criticism or the scrutiny because it's not really. I, I've explained in my predictions playlist over and over and over that this doesn't really have anything to do with the historical research that I'm doing. I'm just using a mathematical construct to show that we can predict some things and with very, very good accuracy. But then again. It's a, a, it's not exactly a, a fixed medium. It seems to be that human events can be influenced by individual humans. In the individual has great power to disrupt the timeline, and I've showed examples of this. So, so it's not, it's not history is not fixed. By it's a continuum. It's a medium. Most of the most of the major events in world history are on a fixed timeline. And I've showed that and it's, but events in the individual, in the particular events affecting only a minority or an individual, they, they're almost impossible to predict those. We are just too dynamic. Why does gold have value? That's a good one. Let Zechariah Sitchin tell it, and gold was something the Anunnaki wanted, so they created humans to mine it, and uh, I'm not going to say that that theory isn't tenable. It does explain why the Inca had all kinds of gold, and they they uh, didn't value it as a commodity. They used it as ornamentation only, as if they were trying to save it or preserve it. I don't know. I don't know where, that's not, I don't know where gold, why why gold was decided to be a precious metal. But then again, you're listening to a guy who absolutely believes the uniformitarian narrative. Yeah, I am going to butt heads with all anthropologists. I don't believe at all we developed from uh, primate hominids and we've developed over hundreds of thousands of years to become uh, more Neolithic and agrarian. And then next thing you know, uh, uh, we're started, we're building urban centers and and we're developed into modern homo sapiens, modern uh uh, homo sapiens yeah i'm not i'm not on board with that i don't see in the historical record we have explosions populations explosions by by bodies of people that just appear out of nowhere and it's it's yeah it's just like whole uh in the archaeological record we have we have massive explosions of of life forms for which there are no pre-existing uh uh Examples. There's no fossil examples. There's no transitional forms. We just have this Cambrian explosion where tens of thousands of new life forms just suddenly appeared. And then later on through a cataclysm or a reset, they're gone. But the ones that are left behind that we have found aren't just gone. It looks like they were flash frozen because we have petrified jellyfish. We have stone earthworms. We have the suction cups on giant squids and octopuses petrified in rock. How do you do that? How do you petrify a fish that's in the middle of swallowing a smaller fish? How do you turn to stone a, pur a porpoise that is giving birth to another porpoise? How? How is it that ferns uh, that, that gr only grow uh, at certain altitudes are found absolutely preserved in fossils? How is it that whole clam beds with the clam shells still shut, all petrified, as if that's exactly, they were frozen in time and petrified? 
And if any of you don't do don't think that's mysterious, then it's because you you lack you lack the data. And that data is is that the archaeologists were astonished when they found it because dying or dead mollusks and clams open their shells because of the relaxation of the internal muscles. They open their shells when they die or as they're dying. But we don't find them in the fossil record that way. We find them as if they were flash frozen. Perfectly fine. So, yeah. And the, the jellyfish are being invertebrates. Thousands of examples of petrified jellyfish have been found. I have three different videos that show all my fossils. The whole collection of fossils that I have documented. Massive amount of pictures of all kinds of petrified life forms that shouldn't be. You shouldn't be able to turn these things to stone. Not petri the petrification process as presented to us through the uniformitarian uh, natural selection theory of science today is absolute bullshit. Something else happened. And in the archaics data, I revealed that, it, that the entire world was flash frozen. And it was flash frozen in ancient times because a star detonated. That star's detonation raped the earth of its entire atmosphere in a millisecond. Everything on Earth was frozen to solid. The simulacrum had to start over, and it did. And we have this explosion of life forms right after that, where it started. And they lived on in geologic time for a long time, and it happened again. S something big, something big hit the Gulf of Mexico, wiped out all life. Simulacrum brought it all back. Over and over and over, we see the patterns throughout archaeology that absolutely defy the uniformitarian model of history which is BS. For those of you who want to spend six or seven dollars, there is a book. It's a thousand pages or 900 and something pages. It's called Evolution Cruncher. And I've talked about this book on my channel before. It's massive. It's got photographs. It's a scientific book that goes into extreme detail, showing you example after example after example, recorded by scientists, showing that the historical Historical uniformitarian view of long millions of year geological ages, excuse me, cannot be true. And this is why. And they give all the evidence. All the human architecture and human artifacts that have been found at one and two miles deep in the earth when we when we dig wells in coal seams, in oil deposits, what is human artifacts doing down there? So it's just over and over and over. This world has been reset and destroyed, but it's but it's but it's done with rapidity, and there isn't hundreds of thousands of years in between these events. The events are absolutely much more compressed. The reason the idea two hundred years ago came around that these were millions and millions and millions and millions of years apart is simply because it was assumed that it took hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years for life forms to develop from primitive to more complex. But that's not what we find. We find complex organis or organisms from the very beginning and then resets and destructions. And then new species appear for which the older species are not an ad adaptation from. Yeah, so and then we have then we have cosmic jokes. Then we have these little riddles that are put out there by the simulacrum to to basically to tell those who are willing to see, hey, this is all untrue. One of them is called the duck bill platypus. So yeah, we have we have so many examples from the the, the uh, archaeological record. Benny Riley, Jason Q still around, just saw him with with Tom Numbers a few days ago. Tom Numbers. I ain't heard that name in a long time. Tom Numbers. It's crazy. Hmm. Is there any significance to Church Bella being used in ancient times? Belladonna? Bella? I don't know what a Bella is. You know, you'll have to educate me on that. Hey, and Benny, I, I mean, Jason Q and I should get together sometime, but it would, it, it would be a conversation that I would never put on my channel. But, uh, yeah, he and I should get together sometime. I just, like I said, there's a lot of people that I want to talk to, and a lot of people have reached out to me, and I will have time. I mean, like I said, starting next week, Matthew's going to be here, and that's going to free up a lot of my time.
to to do to do more recordings to put together better presentations yeah well we, believe me i don't we don't need to rehash all that start uh, look starting next week i can actually just uh, do videos so i just start releasing all kinds of videos that are so different than anything that i've put out before that's how much data i have i don't have to talk about phoenix anymore or nemesis x object i can go ahead and start talking about the dark satellite i can go ahead and start talking about uh everything that's going to happen from 2041 all the way to 2178 i've got the future mapped out i've done the isometric projections for that i also have all the the date index material from Mar mario reading's discoveries on the pro the quatrains of nostradamus yeah I got a lot, man. I really do need to get get a lot of that done. Oh, uh, I got some books back here. I need to get into too. I can do presentations on some of these. I got some books from 1800s and, and uh, early tw uh, 19th, 20th century right behind me. I need to. I really need to get into. Runaway trains question, Jason. Please answer runaway trains question. Where is runaway train? Okay, I just seen him, but he said it's too long to type. Let me go back here and find somebody's question. Runaway, did you not put it in caps? I'm going all the way back up the feed looking for runaway train's question. I don't see runaway train anywhere yet. I'm glad I'm going back up because it looks like YouTube just knocked my feed down. I missed a lot of this. Runaway train. I'm looking for your question, man. I, I don't see your name anywhere after before the point where you asked, where you said that it's too long to retype. If any if anybody can copy and paste it at the bottom, I'll find it. I can't find I can't. Yeah, I can't see it. Nowhere. I'm going all the way back to the top. I sure don't want to waste everybody's time looking for it. That's a lot of comments I just went through. I haven't seen Runaway Train yet. Is this what you're talking about? 5.55 p.m. Runaway train. So Chicago is not going to be affected much. Uh, I don't know. I hope that's the question you're talking about. I, Chicago, the only, the only danger I see from Chicago, because Chicago will be moving 30 degrees south. First of all, there are no bodies of water to the south that Chicago has to worry about. What Chicago has to worry about is when the Great Lakes are going to catch up, because they will, because they're going, it's they're they're going to be sloshed from their basin. But then they're going to try most of those most of those Great Lakes waters are going to are going to follow it, and then they're going to fill the basin the basin back up. So remember, water doesn't move as fast as, as land masses do. So. Uh, a lot of that water will be lost by virtue of attrition. It's going to be spread out over over flatter areas. It's going to form rivers and go in all different directions. But a lot of that body of water from the Great Lakes is going to follow, and it's going to end right back up in that basin uh, of the Great Lakes. Now, the problem is it's not just going to slosh in and stop. It's going to keep going, and now Chicago might be might might, might be might might have a trouble from the backwash, which to the Chicago people of Chicago may look like a a freshwater tsunami. I don't know. That's a good question. I would have to study the topography more to understand that. I've never been asked about Chicago before to actually look at a map and and, and see because I don't see I don't see any problems other than the fact that to the south it's going to be a free thirty degree move. And uh, in ancient times, a lot of the times when when they were describing some of the events that were happening, we in the traditional record we have descriptions of when the sun and the moon just suddenly turned in the sky and went a certain direction, and they went a certain direction, and then all of a sudden the stars followed them, and they watched clouds move fast. Okay, in the ancient world, they thought the sky and the heavens were basically tripping. What they didn't understand is they were suffering lithospheric displacement, a temporal pole shift. It would happen. 
the whole world would wobble. It would happen, and then it would it would stabilize. Now you have to understand. I am talking from the perspective of someone who is one hundred percent convinced that the sky, the stellosphere, is technological, and that all movement that is perceived on the surface is actually happening in the sky. So it's very deceitful. So there's not a real pole shift, but the effect is the same. So it's very hard to separate fact from fiction. Just because the world beneath your feet isn't really moving, and it's really the sky that's 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 creating the sensation of movement, and it's and it's other phenomena that are basically saturating the earth with with vibration to mimic earthquakes and and upheaval and subsidence, then it's very very convincing. So in some of my other videos, I explain how how the stellosphere operates, that there are nodal apertures that we call variable stars, that these variable stars are always at periods of very high activity when there's disasters, when the Phoenix phenomenon appears. Variable stars are not like other stars. Variable stars change their magnitudes, and that's what makes them very unusual to astronomers. So, because for thousands of years, since the days of Hipparchus, since he cataloged the fixed stars and their magnitudes, they haven't changed. They all, the fixed stars are still in the exact same positions they were in the days of Hipparchus, the constellations. The, the, uh, they have the same magnitudes. They haven't changed throughout history, but not the, uh, not the variable stars. The variable stars always change their magnitudes. Their first magnitude, second magnitude, third, fourth, fifth, whatever. They, uh, to me, those are like thousands of little projectors in the sky that are emanating some type of frequency through light from different areas of the stellosphere concentrating on certain areas of the geography to create phenomena, to make you believe all this is real. So we're not talking about one movie projector. We're talking about thousands of them hidden in the sky that all work together in tandem and not only produce optics, but also the physical phenomena and sensations by which your central nervous system interprets as absolutely real. Let's see. Let me go back up here since I'm missing stuff. Hmm. Sorry, guys, it talks so much, it won't let me go back higher in the thread. Near the coastline. Petrodata. Do the inversionists know about the Phoenix Nemesis X and have they constructed a reality around it? I believe the elite know about the Phoenix. I, I believe they, I, listen, I believe the elite know about the Phoenix. I'm going to offer you a theory right now that I have never, ever discussed on any of my YouTube videos because it was something that I wanted to release when I start releasing all my data on the dark satellite. But it seems like that, that keeps getting further and further away. So let's just talk about it now. All right. I have a, I have a working theory that the elite do what they do because they have a very perennial fear of what is coming when the dark satellite arrives or when the Nemesis X object comes. Because these in the traditional record are, are, are claimed to be inhabited. They are occupied. They are not intruder planets. They are not worlds. These are super constructions that are within the simulacrum machinery itself, hidden in the stellosphere. And for whatever reasons, they just can't come down to Earth. They're up there, maybe like in, in orb orbiting prisons within the, the Dyson shell or wherever we're in. I have a theory, though, that the elite are playing the part of stewards because even if they don't want to participate in the things that they do against the collective, they have to in order to maintain their own security because this, this kingship over the world is supposed to be maintained until they hand it over to other identities and personalities who are going to claim it back, who have been here before and left it to the elite and their families to as, as a type of stewardship. This is a working theory I have based off many occult and mystic texts and traditions and the Sumerian records themselves as we have come to know them through the translations of Samuel Noah Kramer, Ma Marine Gallery Kovacs, uh, George Smith, some of the theories of Lenormand and Kingston. Uh, 
I'm talking about hundred over a hundred years ago. I don't give a damn about Zechariah Sitchin and could care less about his theories. I really know. You already know. You guys know I'm a critic. Um, uh, as far as his translations go, I don't care. So, but anyway, yes, it really. I'm a student of Thomas Burgoyne, though, and many of you know what I'm talking about because you took it on my recommendation to go ahead and order his books from the 1880s, Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, Volume 1 and Volume 2. He does spend about a chapter talking about the dark satellite and its occult inhabitants and how they will come back to, to our world. So we have, we have glimpses of this fear of these ancient ones and their return in a lot of occult literature. We have this fear of the return of Earth's rightful rulers who have been here before until they were they were basically exiled by during a cataclysm. And they've been trapped somewhere else, but they always expected to return. And when they return, they fully expected that those that they gave the reins of power had better still be ruling when they get back to make their job when they return much easier. So I'm tying in a lot of things, not just Thomas Burgoyne, but you guys remember, you need to pay very close attention to my video on the Necronomicon. You, some of y'all, some of you, some of you in the comment section on that video, you know, took it upon yourself to try and educate me that the Necro Necronomicon is fiction. And I'm telling you now, over and over and over, it is fiction that is always covering fact. I've also shown you in that video that a lot of that material came from Near Eastern texts. Whole passages of the Enema Elish from ancient Babylon are in the Necronomicon. A lot of passages from old Arabic occult texts are also in the Necronomicon. So don't think the Necronomicon doesn't have value. I showed you where it talks about the Great Pyramid, the Gate of Yaksakak, how it's all mentioned, and how the ancient ones are returning to the earth once more. It's all there. The dark, the, the dark satellite superconstruction or the Nemesis X object, which is also a superconstruction, uh, are returning. But it's the Nemesis X object that's actually going to collide with Earth. It's not going to be a planet or a giant comet or an asteroid. It's a super construction. We're talking about something that acts like an arc that has all the life support systems for a large body of residents. And it's been, and it's been off world for a very long time. And it probably can't even land properly, and it's going to crash. And I've showed this and revealed to you guys in prior presentations. The impact area is the Badlands of Montana in the year 2046. It is the 1,872nd day of the Mayan Long Count Countdown, which was an ancient computer countdown when it started during the vapor canopy period. So remember, all those ancient calendars that are super sophisticated, Mayan long count, 1,872,000 days, divided by 13 equal parts of 144,000 days each. It's a computer template, just like the Vedic calendar, which is all divisible by 144,000 day periods. Just like the ancient Sumerian, Sumerian texts that talk about the calendars of the pre-flood world, which were all divisible by 144,000 days or 432,000 years, which is 144,000 times three. This, is, this, this number is over and over and over and over throughout, throughout history. All the oldest calendars in the world were countdowns to something that was going to happen in the last days. So I don't know what, I don't even what, how that, I don't even know how I went on that, that subject. I don't know what somebody asked me to, to go down that direction. But yeah, the, I have, a, I, I have a theory that I just haven't really revealed on YouTube because I, I, I keep promising to do the dark satellite videos, but I keep getting, getting sidetracked with other projects. But uh, yeah, it's, it's the elite, the elite are fulfilling a role and there's consequences to pay if they're still not in control when the, when the ancient ones return, whoever the ancient ones are. It might be the very original architects of the simulacrum itself who are also trapped inside here with us. So yeah, you never know.
All right. I hope they, okay, that was Runaway Train about Chicago. I hope that was the question you were talking about, bud. Toyota FJ Cruiser. Have you ever heard of Tartarian Truth? I discovered your channel through their videos. Yeah, I've heard of him. I haven't seen some of them, and I consider I, I really don't consider him a friend. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not. I'm not impressed at all. So he's just another one. He's just another one that's attacking, you know, subtly, and that's cool because it's brought people like you and others to my channel, and I'm cool with that. But yeah, it's you know what? I'm not gonna waste my time with him. He used to appear in the chat. Oh, uh, but uh, he might have been blocked by now. I don't know. Oh, believe me, he's one of many. Let's see. Inversionist. <clears throat> All right. I'm looking for new. Oh, I'm looking for all capitals, guys. This means that my little island in the Caribbean will go underwater with a tsunami. I'm really sorry, Philo 4000, but in the month in the early month of May in 2040, I wouldn't be caught dead near the Caribbean. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't want to be. I don't want to be a doomsayer. But if you go, but if, but if you go by the model that I'm telling you, where the Great Pyramid is the center of all centrifugal motion, you look just look at any map. It doesn't matter which projection you use, because the effect will be the same. It's a 30 degree. It's a 30 degree spin, with the Great Pyramid being the epicenter. Every one of you can do this experiment with for yourself, and you can answer your own questions about 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 safety. You got to understand where the large bodies of water are. You don't want one in front of you for that whole 30 degrees. You do not want one in front of you. Yeah, there's a second person asking me about Tartarian Truth. Listen, guys, these guys that are attacking me, they're citing my, my podcasts and my uh, my live videos. There are no data dumps in my podcasts. In my live videos, my live videos are when I spend time with the Archaics family. In my podcasts, I am basically informing people that have never had contact with the archaics data. But if you want to get to the meat and potatoes, you want to see the mathematical construct, the arithmetic, the actual source materials. If you want to see some profound data that I challenge you to refute, then go to my data dumps. Go look at my uploads. Go see the materials that I have revealed that have basically convinced me Someone who has raised a Southern Baptist Puritanical Christian for the first 40 years of my life. I was so, so immersed into the, in, into the culture, Bible believing and all that. You know what? Totally, I'm totally separated from all of that and fully 100% embracing simulation theory now because it's the only thing that can make sense from all the anomalies and enigmas from the ancient to modern world. We can take every single YouTube channel in every theory that they have, and we can dissect it, we can separate fact from fiction. In every enigma, every coincidence, deja vu, Mandela effect, every single mystery of the ancient world till today can be answered in simulation theory. So I can't I can't turn my back from it anymore. But people like Tartarian Truth and his buddies and shit, no, they can't they can't see past that. And I'm cool with that because I'm not here to educate people who don't want to hear anything that, that doesn't comport with their own belief systems. I could care less what other people believe. I do this freely on my own, and I did it for two and a half years without earning a dollar. Now I've monetized my channel. I have some return, and I'm hated for it, and I'm cool with that too, but I'm very comfortable with who I am. I'm also pretty comfortable with being attacked because 99.9% .9 of the people that attack me behind a keyboard would never do it standing in my studio. I know who I am and I know who they are. And I'm cool with that. But Tartarian Truth and his ilk and all those other, uh, other guys, they're nothing. And they know that. And I don't care what they say anymore. It's just stupid. 
It's all, it's so juvenile. I'm not in eighth grade anymore. It's fucking, it's juvenile as shit. Let's see. Hmm. I am on, let's see. No, I'm not. Break free or die trying, y'all. That's it. That's it. Travis Ray, are you going to do another video with J Dreamers? You know what? My my video, I did two or three of them with him so far. And a lot of people like those. He's got a, he's got a really he's got a really catchy personality, doesn't he? I like J Dreamers. I have noticed though, I've seen on YouTube, he's been putting them out. He's been going he's been going hard. I'm not trying to compete with him, but uh yeah, we need to do another one in the future. I just got to find a real good topic that he and I can really vibe on. I mean, not everything has to be about Phoenix and Plasma Apocalypse or so many other. Like, he does a good job covering other topics in his uh, movie, in his movie decodes. I like those. But, yeah, we can always find, we can always find some, some common ground. Because remember, from the beginning, guys, I've always told y'all, it's, it's all about common ground with me. I want to find the common denominators. I am not really interested in the things that, that makes the archaics output different than other, other channels and deal. Cause I, I didn't enter this. This is not a race to me. I'm not trying to compete with anybody. Hell you are, you guys already know I spent two and a half years uploading videos without, without any subs. I didn't have any subs. I had less than 2000 subs for the first 250 videos, something like that. 200 videos or 250. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it's crazy. Earthquakes are something very under, something we just don't understand. Uh, Pliny the Elder has an account. In Natural History by Pliny the Elder, there is an account in around 70, 85 to 70 BC sometime. I'm, I'm going to have to look it up again to find out. I never forgot this, though, because it's during a period. I need to do a video about it, but it's during a period when uh, very unusual things were being seen and recorded in the sky. Pliny the Elder, Elder recorded them in, in his deal. And uh, one of the things that happened is so unusual. But in one of the suburbs of Rome, outside the Seven Hills, one day, I believe it was in the morning, one day there was a, a, a earthquake that people felt just a slight vibration, but on one person's property, the ground lifted up about 12 feet and then corkscrewed, completely spinning 180 degrees to stop to where it moved a building and a tree and basically changed their places. The whole area moved like it was a giant disc and it just moved. It's like something underground just spun came up, spun, and went back down. And everything on the surface had to, had, to, had to copy it. That is bizarre. But it was fully recorded by Pliny. And, and, and he even mentions how unusual and bizarre it was. But, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of... I, got, I still got a lot of material to divulge to you guys. A lot. We're going to get to it. I promise we're going to get to it. Math, math, Matthew's going to be a game changer. Uh, square peg, I think you're talking about a different Matt. You say Matt's not about archaics. I tried, but he wasn't interested. You're talking about a, a totally different Matthew. Let's see. Let's see. Big Brother's always watching. All right. Intelligentsia 101. All right. Hi, Jason. What can you tell me about Lumeria and why was the Moors removed from history? All right. Well, that's two, two completely separate topics. One, I don't know anything about the Moors. I got people blowing up my email, asking me to do videos about Moors. And, you know, the only thing I know about the Moors was that the, the, the uh, Arabic Saracens went into North Africa and put a whole bunch of African villages to the sword, chopping, you know, promising to chop off right hands and right arms. Uh, for those who didn't want to convert to Islam, um, a lot of this history has been suppressed. I mean, there's been ways to, you know, there's been attempts to sanitize the Arabian history uh, about what they did to Africa to create to create the more the basically the the uh, the great 
the great armies that invaded Europe that were led by the, the Arabian Saracens, but they were filled with black African Moors and, uh, they conquered, they conquered a lot of Europe and, and maintained an occupation and an integration for centuries. And Europeans don't like to talk about the period, at least the Europeans that are, were in that part of the, in that part of Europe that were the occupation zones. They don't like to talk about that, that, uh, uh period. And, uh, especially the Jewish historians, they definitely don't like to talk about the period because they don't want to reveal their involvement and in how they allowed all this to happen by inviting the Muslims in and opening up city gates and opening up trade and finances, uh, to, to the, to the Muslims so that they would attack their Christian hosts. So there's the whole period of, uh, of time, uh, preceding the crusades is one that really nobody wants to talk about because of all the different things, the negative things that were just happening at the time. But I don't know much about the Moorish history. I don't, I don't know about, I don't know anything about the Moorish history outside the context of basically they, they were, uh, they were led by the Arabian Saracens to do what they did to, to attack Europe. So I don't know. Let's see. To me, I don't know, man. It seems like there's a huge narrative out there to, to take a geographical area like Tartaria and then extend it into the cultures of others that don't didn't never had any contact with them, don't know anything about the Tartarians, and and uh, it's the same thing with the Moors. So what is a? Uh, I don't I don't understand why. I don't know, man. I just I don't really care about the racial politics anymore. I just don't. It seems like so so many people identify with their avatars, and they want to make sure that their own pedigree was doing this in history, and they derive from this. I don't give a damn about this avatar. This Jason Brashear's avatar doesn't mean shit to me, because as I've revealed in many prior videos, I am one hundred percent of the belief that I've been Asian, that I have been Arabic that I have been black, that I have been sub-Saharan African black, that I have been uh, Egyptian, I have been Mauritarian, I have been Etruscan, I have been many things because I've lived, I've lived through many life sims in this experience. So the whole, the whole attachment to race to me is absolute BS now. And it's nothing I even want to entertain. It just doesn't, doesn't even matter to me anymore. I don't care. I like Dale Errant Hart. I like Dale Earnhardt. I used to watch him. Yeah, I used to be one of those guys. Sit there and watch all that NASCAR. Yeah, Square Peg. I don't know who you're talking about, but I will say this. Cataclysms and resets are a very natural part of our history. They have happened so many times. And only in retrospect that we have so many chronological records now have we been able to put together a template that shows the exact time when the next one's going to happen. I get it that people are turned off by that. I get it because uh, a lot of people's attitudes was programmed that way. Y2K predicted nothing, nothing happened. H1N1 predicted no world, no, no pandemic happened. We've had multiple predictions over and over and over and over. Nothing happened. 20, yeah, 2012 over and over 2018, huge scare about Nibiru 2019. Oh, they were wrong. It's going to be 2020. Then, then COVID breaks out totally different scenario here. So now, now we just had this latest one. Oh man, September 23rd. So listen, when, when the public has been made to hear somebody cry wolf over and over and over and over and over and over. That is by design. It's so when the truth does manifest, you won't believe it. But yeah, I get it. That's why I'm not even, I don't even get frustrated with people who don't, who don't, uh, believe something. I get frustrated with people who refuse to look at the data. That's a different scenario there. If you refuse to believe something and you've assessed the material, that's cool. I can accept it. Okay, you're really far, man. You're far. You you're so far into dungeon programming that I probably can't even even. There's nothing I can say to save you. You're you're out of it. And I'd never be upset about that. But if you refuse to see data that is freely provided to you and you still main maintain an opposing vantage point, then you're a hypocrite. Those are the people I have no patience with at all, at all. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see. What? Atlantis Rising Podcast. Jason is at 49,000.9. Oh, wow. You know what? I'm, I'm about to hit 50. I appreciate you guys' support. And believe me, I just wanted to do a live today. I'm sorry if this live is a little boring. It's not as exciting as my, my other lives. I can't really tell. I'm not a good gauge of that. I just wanted to touch base today, make sure that give y'all some news reports. Atlantis Rising is a really good magazine I read from the 90s. Fantastic. Full of mysteries. It's awesome. So I see Atlantis Rising podcast. I wonder if you're connected in any way. I know I've seen you many times before, but the actual magazine, Atlantis Rising, old copies can still be obtained by Book Tree of San Diego. They, they're still putting out old copies of that magazine. It's fantastic. Just like uh, I was published in 2004 or 2005, I was published in a magazine called Paranoia. I don't know if Paranoia is still put out today, but uh, copies of that magazine with my article about the Phoenix is still in that mag It's still circulating. I've seen one recently. I've shown pictures of that of that article in one of my videos one time. Crystal Shaman, how you doing? Looking for a question. Jason, let's make a, let's make a comic book of Arcaeus accessible for kids. I'm on board with that. How do you do it? You'd have to educate me. I don't know how to do that. I have enough I have enough trouble just trying to get my material out, much less come up with a Something different. Yeah, what about me? You're right. I ain't going to pay attention to the dudes. I don't really don't care. The Jedi knowledge base. Oh, yeah. Y'all like my... Look at that. The Mandalorian. Y'all like that? It's another, it's another show I have never seen, but man, I keep hearing about it and I love Star Wars and, I, and I've been promising you guys a Star Wars video and I haven't been able to have time to do that either. I got lost. Hey, listen, if y'all want to blame anybody, I'm going to tell you now, there's a woman in Florida and her name is Jay. I ain't going to tell your last name, but you can blame her for me slowing down a little bit on these live videos. I'm going to tell you that now. Because she sent me some books from the late 1890s, 1905, 1915, to 1940s, and I haven't been able to get out of them. And I'm sorry. You'll see them in videos. <clears throat> Meg Culvert, listen, <clears throat> a lot of the, the, lot of the material that we have found from the ancient world up until today that I have created a vast synthesis of and shown through all these playlists, it may just be backdrop programming to introduce enough variables into the construct so that the construct will never be disbelieved by the majority. What I mean is, is I'm reading your comment and I see it's futile effort to be upset about what's happened to the real world. Listen, I agree. I am 100% convinced we are living within a copy of a real system, but we could very well be on a capital ship right now, leaving a star system that we know is going to detonate and we're going toward, toward a younger star right now. And on board this giant arc that's going from one star to another, another, we are running simulacrums because this is the best way to occupy our time because our journey is going to be for centuries. I believe there's a space. I believe there's a cosmos, but I believe right now when I go outside and I, in my backyard and I look up at the sky at night, that what I'm seeing is an artificial construct inside a simulacrum like a Dyson shell, a multi-tiered hologram of a sky that's hiding machinery. We are inside a simulacrum, and there may be many, many, many simulacrums aboard that capital ship. So the whole the whole thesis about us being on board a capital ship is just a 
It's a long chain of cognitive leaps, one from from one from one established series of facts to another that goes from the ancient world, why these calendar, calendars exist, what's attached to these calendars, the fact that we have evidence of technology through the whole thread of human history. There's always technology somewhere. Therefore, technology technology is something that is a part of the construct. Perhaps it's underground. It's always existed in linear fashion while it's been broken up on the surface. But for whatever reason, I've made every single cognitive leap until the present through all these data sets to conclude that the only thing that absolutely makes sense to me is that I'm living in a fake world. But that fake world is located in a real one. And therefore, all the data that's been presented to, to me all through in what I'm experiencing now may be just background data to events that have never happened. But it's the but it's the data itself when it is deconstructed to its base common denominators that tells me all kinds of little interesting clues that I can put together. And the only thing that makes sense is that we on the outside of this construct are, are our pilgrims. We are sojourners. We're moving. We're in transit between two realities. One of them was harrowing and we got to get away. And the other one is nothing but promise. But we have enough data about the one that we're heading toward that we're able to run very sophisticated simulations. So instead of just running simulations objectively, we decided to do go even more sophisticated and run simulacrums, which means we're not running a simulation objectively. I'm talking about something that we something that is external to us. That's the type of technology that we have today in the real world that we're experiencing. We decided because we have the technology to run simulacrums, meaning that we ourselves are participants of the very simulations that we're running. So for whatever reasons, we're doing it. None of that detracts away from the fact that we are spiritual beings and that each life sim provides us opportunities for advancement and growth. So I hope that, I hope that helped you a little bit. Yeah, I like the comic book idea. I mark all my, my videos and posts on YouTube as not for kids. This has gotten other channels canceled in the past. I mean, there's a lot of things that will get your channel canceled. One of them is you can provide you can provide really high quality uh, uh, public friendly videos. But if you let your chat threads get out of control and people are bitching and hoeing each other and doing all kinds of stuff in the chat thread, and talking shit and being disrespectful and posting porn links and all this stuff in your chat thread, well, YouTube's only going to let that go down for a while because children still have access to a lot to a lot of chat threads. Uh, and you know what? These, a lot of people talk about how their channels got 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 a deal, but they just don't want to tell you the truth. I mean, there's a symbiotic relationship between Google and YouTube because YouTube is owned by Google, but Google makes sure that we we file our 1099s with the uh, 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 the uh, IRS. So another reason why people get their 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 channels canceled is Google is is basically paying them every month to uh, in advertising and all that. But then Google gets notice from the IRS that they're not they're the 1099 has been filed, but that person's not paying their taxes. And uh, yeah, people get channels canceled all the time, but it's not for a lot of the reasons you think. And yes, I'm not saying that that some channels have been canceled because people were telling the truth. I believe that too. I believe that too. But there's a lot of different reasons why. Now, I'm gonna police my, my my comment sections for real. My my comments are gonna are all about positivity. You're not a you're not, you're not, you come to my channel with that negativity, you're, you're not going to last. I'm going to let you get away with a couple comments and then I'm going to address that shit. A lot of times people, people, uh, like I told you in my post today, a lot of times people get my, they don't, they don't expect to hear from me. They think it's just freestyle. You can just say what you want to on my channel. Yeah. I spend a lot of time in my comments. I'm a pretty fast reader. I go through them quick. And when I see those, uh, I address them. And uh, sometimes I'm trying to educate people. 
and they take their comment down, which removes my answer. So I started screenshot. I have a policy now. Yeah, anytime I come across questionable comments on YouTube, I screenshot them and then I reply to them and I screenshot the reply. I got a bunch of, I could release a whole video on, on nothing but all the asinine stuff people have posted and then what my response was and then how they took their comment down. So yeah, it's, yeah, for whatever reasons. I know people get triggered and they're forgive, they're forgiven for that, but other people are here for ulterior, ulterior, ulterior reasons. They're not trying to learn anything. So yeah, I'm not putting up with that. They're gone. Yeah, all you got to do is act crawl sideways with me. I'm going to eliminate you. Yeah, but y'all don't get mad at me. Y'all get mad at Jay. How about that other stuff? About me slacking lately. All right, let's move on down here to see some. Um, what is your percent? Okay, well, I already, already addressed that. <clears throat> Church, Bella, I don't know what that is. Well, uh, Ali Dow, okay, it's the year 2022. You're asking. You're asking, how, I mean, how do we live? Do we participate in the new financial system? Do we pay rent? Do we work international trade, immigrate? Uh, I mean, if immigration is impossible, listen, your entire comment is fear-based. I don't know if you've seen my prior presentations. I don't know how new you are to, to, to my channel. But I do know this, that you are going to experience whatever you allow yourself to experience. If you want to be a part of the collective, if you feel a need to go through everything that your neighbors and contemporaries are going through, the simulacrum is going to reflect that back to you as circumstances. You're going to be enjoined with them in that manner that you perceived. But if you want to be independent of that, if you want to exercise your rights, privileges, and immunities to be a divine soul that writes their own existence, then the simulacrum will reflect that as phenomena as well. You have the right to choose where you want to be as far as coordinates go with, within this, this, this uh, thought field. That's all. It's all up to you. The fear that, that you're, that's all, this whole comment you made is just absolutely saturated with that negativity, that fear-based mode of thinking that's propagated by the media. On my channel, I am always encouraging people to divorce themselves from ABC, NBC, CBS, BBC, CNN, all the major news network channels. You've got to quit feeding into that BS. The more you separate yourself from all the negative bad news that's being that's being just churned out on a daily basis, the more you'll start vibrating at a higher frequency and it will bring into contact new phenomena that will basically widen your awareness of your potentiality, the things you can do, the things you you have access to, which right now you're not vibrating on the right frequency. That's why what I'm telling you right now, you're fighting against. You don't see the, the potentialities. You don't see the possible doors that could be open to you right now because this frequency, that's what it does. Whatever frequency your soul is vibrating at, your mind will sit there and amplify and it will project that into the simulacrum. The simulacrum being a neutral field will reflect that back as circumstances. Therefore, it's a self-fulfilling feedback loop. You got to change your frequency to change your world. And this is the message of many, many of my past videos. All right, let's see. What do you think of Russia and China versus NATO? You know what? <clears throat> I really don't want to address that yet, but I have a real good feeling that it's going to be a lot more than Russia and China. And I have a real good feeling that you're going to see some people pulling out of the United Nations. It's going to shock you. Is it possible that our entire universe is part of the simulacrum? Well, I mean, it's that's a matter of perspective. What, what is the universe to you? 
Do you believe that in 1973, we actually sent a satellite outside the solar system? Do you believe that in 1969, with the technology that we had at the time, we sent men to the moon and they made it back? I mean, what is the what is the universe to you? Do you believe that everything that 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 you see in astronomy books that they have actual good photographs of of Neptune and and Pluto and Ceres and Triton and all these um, all these uh, objects in the solar system? Do you believe that those are real photographs of, of actual planets that are that are all out there? Do you believe that those are quasars and M4 systems that, that uh, galaxies that are all out there that can be seen by the Hubble telescope? What is the universe to you? To me, it's all optics. To me, it's all optics with a backfield of variable stars that are hidden among the stellar canopy. Those variable stars are our enemy because because they are technological and they attack us. But all the rest of that is optics to me to make me believe in a universe. A holographic technology can be made to look very, very, very real. So I'm just, I don't know, man. I believe that this is just a copy of a cosmos. Yes, the Native American Thunderbird traditions would be the Phoenix. No doubt. Square Peg, you got your first troll comment last week? Oh, you can expect more. Yeah, you can expect more. Everywhere Archaics has been on the YouTube scape, the trolls have followed. I mean, they don't, they don't affect me anymore. New ones, new ones pop up, but they're 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 only they're only gone. They're gone after one comment. But yeah, it's it's a uh, they get they get tired of changing their emails and all that. I don't I really don't care. I mean, it's all stupid. Every bit of it's, it's, it's so it's so eighth grade childish. I'm not worried about it. Firewheel Farm, that's a really good question. Can the elite manipulate isometric projections by faking traumatic events? All right, let's reinterpret the vernacular here. Can the elite manipulate future events by ritual events? I believe they can. I believe it's been happening. I believe, I believe that even Square Peg has found evidence of that. She doesn't know it. I pay attention to her material. I'm just uh yes, I believe the I, I believe that there are that there are massive rituals that if they're watched by enough millions of people, that yes, events can be can can be manipulated to an extent. <laughs> Matthew Cotillo, moon landings, preach it, brother. Terry Rupert, Jason, why does it seem that you allude to not being around in the future, relative near future? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. I'm a little ambiguous about that. Because I'm going to tell you now that once I had spread out over 300 of my USBs with my super pack, which is 100% of all my archaic material, I just kind of felt, I, I kind of felt the weight off of me. I didn't find, I didn't feel the drive anymore. I didn't feel, I didn't feel the pressure anymore that's been on me for, for years. It was like a relief. It was like, you know what, whatever, you know, wh whatever happens now, I'm cool with. I mean, I mean, I, I've been, I have been, very honest in my past presentations about uh, where I am in life. I'm not, I'm not a social creature. You guys think I am because I'm talking to you on YouTube. I don't, sur I don't surround myself by friend and friends and family. I don't do it. I'm a, I'm, I'm antisocial. Uh, I'm distant. Uh, most of my existence day to day is internal. So I'm a, and I also know, I also know that, 
the door at any time, at any time, I could have, you know, I live, a, I live a dangerous life sometimes. I'm going to lie. I'm reckless. I am. Yeah, I'm reckless. I got a 1,000 pound fat boy motorcycle. I've shown pictures of it. I get on it and I'm reckless. There's no doubt. I don't wear a helmet. Helmets scare me. Actually, I only wore a helmet once and I, I put that in my videos. Explain. I explained. Helmet totally felt, I felt like I was in a prison. I almost, I almost had a panic attack. Yeah. Without a helmet on though, man, there's nothing that can come up behind me, see me. I can't sense. I can't hear. You can hear engines in the, in the way they sound. They change pitch in their proximity. You can tell. Yeah. I just, I'm so aware, but not, not with a helmet. A helmet. Yeah. Well, anyway, just to make a long, long story short is, uh, I feel that other people can take, pick up the torch and carry it further than me. Now I have become basically irrelevant. So I'm cool with that. I feel like a, I feel like a major milestone has been passed in my life. I no longer feel that urgency that I got to get all this out. I get all this out. Even now, even today, I posted somebody's video where they took up the torch, took some of the archaics data and presented it way better than I did. I have took my own, took my own stuff and did it. And I'm cool with that because I've given people the permission. So if I've let things, if I've let some dystopian stuff slip, I mean, it's just the way it is. I, uh, I'm a, I don't have that, that drive for self-preservation. I've lived, I've lived through, through basically anything that could have killed me in multiple times. So I'm just, yeah, I don't know. It's just a, uh, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep on, I'm going to keep on producing material. I'm going to keep on uh, fighting the good fight, but the urgency to do so is no longer with me. And the urgency and the need to put out all this information is no longer with me because I've done it. It's in that USB drive. Anybody can take all that and keep, and keep moving forward. And it just might, who knows? It might be my death that starts a movement where to where everybody's trying to get copies of that USB drive. I don't know. I don't know. But like I said, that urgency is gone. If I'm gone in the near future, I'm cool with that. I am. Hey, nothing about this, this life that's been really special to me. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool with doing what I'm doing right now. And if I was to kill over dead tomorrow, I would go to the other side, other side satisfied that I had, I had provided value. I'm cool with that. Can the elite manipulate moon landings, horse shit. All right. Skylab fell in Perth. Man. <laughs> that's, wow. That's crazy. You can't even own a Geiger counter in Hiroshima or Nagasaki. Well, I wonder why. So they'll arrest you if you take one in there, huh? Wow, I didn't know that. iChromes, there you are. Good video, man. I posted that today. I, I think you already know that, though. Jason, do we have the same chronological events outside the simulation? That's a very good question. I don't know. I just know that that everything that I have documented, I have showed you the very first timeline that starts is 5239 BC and it's every 600 years. It's an, it's, it's an Anunnaki timeline, but I probably, that's probably a misnomer for years. I've been calling it the Anunnaki chronology, but it shouldn't have been named that. And when I redo Chronicon and do a final version, I'm going to give it a more appropriate name. The timeline is real. It's all well documented. Many of you have seen my data sets on it every 600 years, a major significant significant events occur that were relative to each other and, and throughout human history. And I, I show those videos and, I, and it's in my published books, but I misnamed it. I should have called it the nemesis timeline. Instead, I called it the Anunnaki chronology. But anyway, that's what started it all was that 600 year deal. Then after that, it was the 
uh, 138-year Phoenix protocol. It's the it's the first appearance of Phoenix in the system. Well, before that, first it was the Nemesis, 5239 BC. 5239 BC is is when the Nemesis cataclysm occurs. All right, Earth is catapulted. Earth is catapulted. Luna is catapulted. Electro, which didn't make it and exploded, is cat is catapulted. Nemesis X object is catapulted. Uh, Phoenix is catapulted. What else? The dark satellite is catapulted. Whatever else was around the Nemesis star was shot in other directions. Probably came detritus. Probably probably assumed bigger orbits. I'm not talking about inside the simulacrum, which is a construct. I'm talking about on the outside of the simulation for which these simulations are being run for in here. So, uh, we were on one of those super constructions that didn't arrive till 4639 BC. 4639 BC, we finally arrived. Right after us in 4309 BC, there's the first appearance of the Phoenix. Right after that in 40 in 4039 or 440 BC was the capture flood. It was the arrival of Luna in the Anunnaki tablets. It's the arrival of the Agigi. Now, this is a, a shortly after that. Phoenix comes right back around 138 years later. There it is, 3895 BC, year one, new heavens, new earth, a cataclysm so terrible that the ancients who were on the surface actually believed it was a new heavens and a new earth, started a new timeline. Thus, it was the beginning of the vapor canopy. Year one, Annus Mundi was 3895 BC, and I've shown this many times, and it's not just my date. I show all the other chronic. Uh, uh, chronologist who came up to the exact same date in history as being year one. Where my research differs from, from them is that they use the Bible to justify that that was 3895 BC and all that. I show all these other ancient texts and authors that show 3895 BC is year one. But additionally, I show that that wasn't the creation at all at all. That was a destruction that was so perfect that the survivors thought it was a new heavens and new earth. In the Christian version, it's the creation, but it's not. Even in Genesis, there's hints. The first command by God to humanity was be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So when I get out my Spirozodhiades commentaries and lexicons on the Old Testament, and I look up that verse, replenish in Hebrew means to fill again, just like it means it means in English. So it's a, we have a reset. That means that there was a lot of history on this world before that happened. And that's what I document. So anyway, yeah, so all these ancient calendars, that's how they started. They started with the appearance of something that had finally arrived. Each calendar is beginning, each timeline is beginning when an object from the dead star arrives to soul and begins its 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 movement. So none of this is really happening inside the simulacrum, but the sky is giving us this picture. Because in ancient history, these are the things that are recorded. Chronologically, we put it all together and you have the archaic thesis. So for those of you who don't know, I do have one video where I show every single calendar and how it, it meshes together and goes all, I go all through world history and show every single date and what and, uh, calendar is very, I forgot the name, the doomsday, was it the doomsday count? I don't remember what the name of the video is, but a lot of people have liked that video and it's just a presentation chronologically arranged of every event in all these different calendars that leads up to 2040, the return of the Phoenix and Nemesis X object colliding into North America in 2046. So, I forgot the name of that video. Somebody can na name it down here. Runaway Train. Jason, is this a passage referring to the Phoenix? Isaiah 13, 5. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. I don't know, man. That sounds like a prophecy of the Amuru, though. The Amuru were the Westerners. They were the sword of God. And he invited them into the ancient Near East to take over, and they did. And I have a video about that, too, about the Amuru, the Westerners. Later on, later on, when the Jews were writing the Old Testament, they didn't go by the actual name that was known throughout the Near East of these people. They invented a name 
Israelite, but the people were really of the house of Qumri, Omri, uh, and they were the enemies. Of, they were the enemies of the Judahites. It's a long story, man. I mean, a lot of people mix up Jews and Israelites, and they think they they're the same pedigree, the same lineage, and the same culture, and they weren't. The first four four wars the Israelites ever fought was against the Jews. So and it's all recorded in the Old Testament for anybody to see. It's just you got to get through all the redactionism. It's it's a bunch of crap. I have videos about it. I have videos about Israelites. They plan to have a 7D hologram of a figure on a white horse shown in the sky via satellite projection. I don't even know what a what 5D or 6D is, much less 7D. I've never done mushrooms, but I got a good buddy named Stephen Walsworth who can tell you all about them. Matter of fact, he's a moderator here. I'm looking for questions. I don't know anything about the Black Knight satellite, Dragon Sage, because there's nothing in the historical record I can read about it, unless Thomas Burgoyne's research in the 1880s in ancient Egypt, Light of the World, is about the dark satellite being occupied by the ancient ones that are coming to rule the world once more. Remember my theory. My theory is that the elite do what they do because they fear something else and they are they are convinced that something is coming back to rule and that they better still be in control of what was given to them. So <clears throat> I don't know. Other than that, uh, the the anything else about the black the black knight satellite would have to be derived strictly from internet sources and you know i can't do that you know i cannot i can't pillage the internet for data and then regurgitate it to you guys and call it original research i can't do that Mike Brogan, if the inter if the information field is all around us, how are we to decipher which thoughts to follow? Man, you got to follow the three things that make you a purely spiritual being, man. That's what you you need to follow: intuition, empathy, and imagination. Those three are your guide. You got to understand this isn't really a right and wrong universe. It's a this is a neutral field. Are we being observed? Are, are, is somebody keeping score? I'm pretty sure. But I think it's a lot deeper than that. I think it has everything to do with the conscience, which is entirely spiritual. And uh, I believe you're going to judge, you're going to judge yourself. So I don't, I really don't know, but the, uh, if you want to know more about the thought field and the thought construct and all, you need to read Ishak Bintov or P.D. Alspinsky and, uh, Maybe even some Paul of Violet to understand the mechanics of, of the informed field, this, this field of information that's all around us and how you can meditate, which I, I'm not a meditator. I don't, I don't, I don't meditate because it, uh, what it, meditation to me is the, is the absorption basically of the thought field all around me. Thoughts are external to us. If the more you try not to think of anything, the more the thought field will be amplified in your mind. And these, all these thoughts, they're not coming from you. Pay attention. Try to clear your mind in a very silent, dark place. Remove everything from the sense apparatus. Try to concentrate on nothing, and your mind is going to be flooded with information. The thought field, you're becoming, the more you try to concentrate on nothing, the more that the thought field will be saturating you, distracting you. You'll never be able to clear your mind, I promise you. Yeah, it's a the thought field. Thoughts are external to us. You think thoughts, but it's your spirit, not your brain. Your brain's a receiver. It's one of the most sophisticated an antennas ever created.
Jason, any knowledge of the Templars in California before Spaniards got there, especially San Francisco? Listen, <clears throat> listen, it was widely known that the Jewish navigator, Cristobal Colon, that you know of as Christopher Columbus, was paid by the Spanish crown, the House of Aragorn, because they, they knew he had access to maps that his people had. His ancestors were Carthaginians. Carthaginians had all access to all, I mean, the, the Jewish Carthaginians had access to all, all the old ancient Phoenician and Roman maps. So it's a, it was widely known that there, that there was concourse with the ancient Americas. So in 1314 AD, we have um, basically the Knights Templar are being run out of Europe and their, their ships, their, their fleets got away. And we really don't know too much what happened. There are rumors that some some among the Knights Templars made it and, and joined Robert the Bruce in the Battle of Bannockburn in Scotland. There are and those are those are pretty persistent. But there's also fleets of the Templars that made it to the ancient Americas. And we have architecture in the Americas that are that 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 do resemble Templar architecture. Or, or pre free Masonic, you know, iconography. But it's just not a mystery to me. There's authors like Barry Fell and David Hatcher Childress and others that have put together really awesome books showing all the European architecture and artifacts that have been found all over Colorado, Texas, Ohio, Mississippi, Montana, all the way up through the near, uh, uh, on the, the coast of the Near East. I mean, the, the excuse me, New England coast. So, it's not even a mystery to me anymore about that. It's a, uh, yeah, I believe that they were here. Where could they go? Everywhere in Europe, they were hunted. So they had, there was only some of them that could take up refuge in Scotland because Scotland was at war with England. And uh, yeah, it's, and who knows, Robert the Bruce may have took them in, took their ships, took their fleets, took their weapons, imprisoned them and handed over, handed them over to the crown, to uh, uh, the Pope. I don't know. I don't want to denigrate the Bruce. I don't want to denigrate. There's a there's a few Bruce's, but uh, Roberts, but I don't know. We just don't we don't really know all the historical details. I don't believe you, pamper pamper pooch. Says Jason, we are stuck in a never-ending time loop for the entertainment of higher being. That's a question. All right, it's obvious we are in a simulation. What do we need to learn to move on so we don't have to come back? I don't believe there's anything you can do to escape until the collapse of the simulacrum. I don't believe it's my place or your place to to figure out a way out. I don't believe that. I don't believe in the soul trap phenomenon. The whole theory that I, I've been hearing lately that uh uh it's a soul trap and that. Uh, we're in reincarnation and we come back if we don't do something right after we after we've departed here. I don't believe in that. Uh, I believe in the oversoul and I believe in the the integrity of the oversoul and that the oversoul has already provided for everything that needed to be provided for. And that the whole idea of ancient prophecies that he comes to set the captives free is not, is nothing but a message to those of us that are inside the simulacrum to, to know that this is temporal experience and that the simulacrum will collapse and that we will be free, but it's not anything that we do. We're here to learn. We're here to grow. We're not here to escape it. And I, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe the soul trap deal at all. I'm just not. Don't go toward the light. Well, listen, man, we got all that from poltergeist in the eighties. You know what I mean? Anything built upon that, any more on that is just purely conjectural. Yeah. I don't, I'm not trying to hear it. I don't know who Ruth, Ruth be drawn, drown, Ruth be drowned. I don't know who that is. Opus die is the controller of the Vatican something. I don't know what it, what it said because YouTube just jumped my, there it is, controller of the Vatican characters. The controller of the Vatican now is a little hat. You see them wear them. They wear, they wear them right now because they have to. They didn't wear them before. Before they wore the fish hats. Now they wear little caps. That's for a reason. There's been a change of regime, a change of ownership of the, of the Vatican.
to see. I don't know about that, <laughs> Fela B. I don't know about that, man. Let's see, meditation. Thank you, Lala. Okay, when it comes to health, when it comes to health, I'm a little ambiguous because one, I don't want to tell you information that you will automatically assume to be true and then you adopt my attitude, but my attitude doesn't work for you because you're still carrying other baggage. Let me explain. You ask about health. I'm going to tell you now, in the spirit of breaking free or die trying, my mantra that I say all the time, oh, I drink co Cokes, I drink Colas, I love beer, all right? I drink bourbon, got, got bourbon up there. I do everything like the Greeks in moderation. That's who I am. I'm going to eat steak. I love, I love pork chops. I'm a good old Southern boy and I love my fried chicken. Listen, I get a lot of, I, I catch a lot of slack from people who hear about my diet, who hear about the, but you know what? I'm an absolute excellent physical condition at 49 years old because it's mental and mentally, I know that every day I'm sweating out of my body, the very things that don't need to be there. I know that my body can produce at will alone, the necessary peptides that will destroy anything like free radicals that develop in my body and will be escorted out through my urine and my sweat because I'm a worker. I don't just sit on a computer all day long. I go, I go on my property of work all the time. So I know what works for me because my physicality is a reflection of what's going on internally right here. And I'm, I'm, I'm strong, I'm athletic, and I just don't, I don't fear anything. I don't worry about my health. I don't worry about doctors. I don't worry about any of that stuff. So now having said that, can I transpose my attitude and my belief to you? No, I can't. I can't. All I can do is share with you what I'm doing and how I live my life at 49 years old. So I don't, uh, I, I, I don't, I, I can't tell you what to do about health and all that. I know this, you have within your makeup, a very sophisticated system that's operable every day, but it lays, it's latent. It lies dormant within you because you're not using it. <laughs> Peptides are fantastic. The building blocks of everything within the human body that the human body may need. You can manufacture your own medicines by thought alone. So you can even, you can even heal ailments in the, in the physical body by thought alone without even producing the medicines. So you can, listen, the very fact that we have the placebo effect and that the placebo effect has been documented to heal people in the past shows an operative, operative phenomenon that's working, that can work for, for anybody. Remember, it's another one of, one of my, my tenets. If we can show that anything is true of one thing, then it can be true for all. So if somebody in this world has healed themselves by virtue of belief thought and action alone, then you can too. You're no different at all. The only thing that makes you different is the belief that you are. So I can't health. I don't like addressing health deals to people. I don't, because I don't, I don't, I don't know where you're at in my informed field. I'm an immortal and a temporary avatar. And because my existence here is very finite and temporal in the, in this avatar, I know that I got to take care of this avatar, but it's the unseen world that is where everything manifests inside the simulacrum. In the, in the unseen world, I write my destiny. In the unseen world, I'm healthy every day. In the unseen world, I've got no worries. I don't borrow into the fear programming. I'm not going to eat a piece of food and then feel guilty about doing it. I'm not going to. I'm moving forward in everything I do. There's no backup in Jason. So if you do, if you're not willing to adopt that personality if you're not willing to just move forward in life do what you want and everything else be damned then you're going to experience setbacks in your health those setbacks need to be dealt you need to deal with it whatever in any fashion you want to choose through medicines through meditation through personal cleansings whatever works for you 
I'm just telling you what works for me. And it works for me because the very reality that I'm trying to convey to all my listeners is the actual reality we live in. The simulacrum is a neutral field. It will reflect back to you exactly what you project. And that includes your health. So, hope that hel- I hope that answered your question. It really is mind over matter. And it takes a while for you to, to it takes a while for people to, to assume that, to, to really get it. You got to break pattern. Breaking pattern, breaking pattern is, is 100% the way to bring new things into your life. If you wake up every single day and you're the same person the next morning that you were the day before, if by 10 a.m. you've done exactly what you do for the past 800 days, you haven't broken pattern. What you did was was basically re-enter a template that the simulacrum has already has in its program. It's already programmed. The shelves, you got all these variables that you can live. There is an invisible shelf somewhere with 10,000 templates as to how your day could go. Those templates have microfilaments going in all different directions that can instantly interface with the templates of others. But they don't because you're choosing this one way over here. Same thing every day. This template pulls off the shelf, insert it. That's your day. That's what you're, that's what you're doing the rest of the day every day. 8.30 in the morning, grab your keys, Drink you an orange juice when you're always drinking grapefruit juice. Drink, a, drink an apple juice. Go to, go to a gas station, fill up the tank, blank your mind out as to where you're going, hit the roads, take an exit when you didn't even plan to take an exit. Then all of a sudden start looking at different stores. Go to a store you've never been to. Walk into it. Make a purchase you would never make a purchase. Artificial Intelligence X is going to go nuts trying to figure out what the hell's on your mind and what you're doing. Do not talk out loud on whatever you're doing. Listen. It has to create reality tunnels for you that will make sense of what you're doing. If it doesn't understand a thing what you're what you're doing, it's going to start throwing things at you. Opportunities are going to come everywhere. One thing that artificial intelligence X does a lot when people are going in this mode and they're free thinking rapidly and just doing things that are sporadic, it will bring in bring into contact with them familiar objects, places, phenomena, or people in an effort to try and draw you in somewhere. You might come across somebody you ain't seen in three and a half years, don't know what happened to them. Then all of a sudden, Artificial Intelligence X has navigated that person who is a part of the collective and easy to control, even though they think they're free-willed. And move them all the way to intercept. And next thing you know, you're in a conversation with this person. Now Artificial Intelligence X has a better reign of what's going on and can guide your next moves. So yeah, breaking pattern is the key. That's how you bring absolutely new experiences into your life. New experiences bring new life, and new life brings new new vibrations. Once you're vibrating on a higher frequency, it begins a feedback loop to where everyday new experiences are what are now the norm, not the exception. So good question. Voynich Manuscript. I got to see that because I'm a, I, I'm a real critic. You say you decoded the Voynich Manuscript. Remember, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. If you have found some things that are very unique and they're original discoveries, I will 100% stand behind you. If it's some BS, I'm going to call it out. Because I'm telling you now, the Voynich Manuscript has been studied by cryptologists it is, it is, it's basically, it's been scanned into the most sophisticated uh, decryption software in the world. It has not been decoded. So I'd like to see it. I don't know if you sent me an email or not, but you, you can easily find my email. Informed dissent. Yes, sir. Uh, Diane Smith, I, I just addressed this. Maybe that, maybe it was Paranormies. Maybe it's Maya. Maybe it's a video you haven't seen yet. She says, "If we're here to learn, why are our memories wiped out uh, between lifetimes?" I don't know which video that I go into detail about this, but but I do. And in that video, I explain that 
Listen, we're living in a holographic medium, and in, in, in this holography, information is never lost. Information is attached to the avatar. The avatar has a brain. The brain is a capacitor. It, it, it stores all this data, but it doesn't think. You're a spirit. You think. When the avatar passes, the personality goes into the next life sim. The next life sim is a new avatar. The new avatar will then begin its, its, its own memory bank storage. You're not going to have access to all the experiences and memories that you have from all your prior lifetimes until you're in your real avatar, not the temporary avatars by which your personality is using right now to skip through these timelines to gain these experiences and maturity. When the simulacrum collapses, you will receive an avatar that comports with the maturity of the personality. This is the subject matter of the mysteries, the ancient mystery plays of the Orphic and the Delphic uh, uh, oracles. This is the the uh, uh, the Orphic, the major tenet of the Orphic faith, the fact that you will receive a new white robe and a white stone will be given to you and that you will be a part of the body of God. And this is what I revealed in my lost scriptures. Uh, the, I just did. I just I explained all this in my lost scriptures uh, uh, audio book reading. It's, it's you have a memory wipe out of necessity because it's a temporary avatar. It's a temporary experience. But in a hollow, hollow field, data is not lost. It's like a holographic kaleidoscope where you are and where I am are two different coordinates. So when we look at the, at the actual holo field, you and I are seeing totally different phenomena. We're seeing different timelines, pieces of timelines, different experiences. If we were standing in the exact same area looking at the holo field, we would see the same thing. But if you're standing next to me, just that slight distance will change the terrain. You will see something slightly different than I will. Our avatars carry the information and what that avatar traveled through, that reality tunnel. When this simulacrum collapses, all that data is still in the holo field. It is still accessible, but not to the individual avatars, which were nothing but biological vehicles to get you from one point in time to another. They're not important. It's the data that's important, and the data is stored in the field. Now, when the field collapses, you get your data back. It will be a part of your new and eternal or your actual avatar. I haven't worked those details out. Those are entirely theoretical. I don't know if we're going to earn a new avatar or if we already have avatars, but the information from within the simulacrum doesn't upload, uh, upload to it until the simulacrum collapses, which, is, which occurs when he comes to set the captives free. Now, it's a, I don't believe the data wipe is permanent at all. I don't believe, I just like the, just like quantum mechanics. I don't believe in the destruction of matter. I don't believe the information is ever lost. I believe, I believe that it is stored somewhere. And this is a very old belief. I believe a lot of people call it the Akashic field. Uh, it has many different names by, di by many different concepts and cultures, but it's the same thing. It's the thought field. It's the thought field mentioned by Ishak Bentov in Stalking the Wild Pendulum or in Brief Tour of Higher Consciousness. It's this medium that we're immersed within. It, it, information is everywhere and it passes through us. Um, like I said, all you got to do is meditate. And when you meditate, you will feel motion. When you are absolutely still and you can see nothing and hear nothing, you will feel the force of motion, but it's not physical. It's internal. You will feel that motion. And in that motion, thoughts will be passing through your mind because your brain is a receiver. It's also an antenna. It's a, so it's, yeah, it's, don't worry about, don't worry about all these life sims and all that because it's temporal. You're going to receive the benefits for every life that you've lived only after you have basically escaped the simulacrum. You take your treasures with you. Stephen Rawls, why do the names of the months seem out of place? The Romans had a 10-month calendar. After a while, they decided to add two months, and they added those two months after February. So 
This is why the last months of the last months of the year are uh, December is the tenth month, November is the eleventh, you know, the eleventh month, October, uh, yeah. Let's see, October is eight, but it's actually the tenth month. September, yeah, you you get it. But uh, yeah, the Romans added two months to a ten month original calendar. They added those two months after February. So uh, the reason was it's 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 a uh, I've gone into detail about the event of 713 BC when the entire world changed their calendars at the same time because the old calendar of 360 days terminated and 5.25 days were added to every single year from something that happened in 713 BC something that was recorded in the Assyrian text. They said it was the change of an age. And they only said that about sky phenomena. Something happened in the sky that made everybody change their calendars. So it's, uh, yeah, it was at that event that they did that. Yeah, guys, but it's 742, two hours and 40 minutes. I have not even believed I've been going that long with 1,100 people in the chat. I want to thank you guys for joining me. Like I said, we got we got a lot more material. Matt's going to be soon be joining me. I got some good videos on the way. Uh, I really appreciate the donations, guys. It keeps me afloat. I appreciate all the support. Uh, also, check in. Th those who are supporting the channel through memberships, check in for your new, uh, there's some new emojis. I don't know when YouTube's going to, approve it but i've already put them in there but it's new archaics symbols just they're, they're archaic symbols you know i i archaics identifiers that'll be attached to, to members names so it's just a little something added for those who who support the channel i appreciate it uh you don't have to keep you don't have to send me a bunch of emails for, for the for the flash drives guy i'm still doing the usbs i'm still i'm still doing them internationally too uh, i've been getting more help i haven't stopped so if you're still interested uh uh, you know how to do it. Just send me an email or go to Podia. You can get them as a free download on Podia. But uh, I appreciate you guys. And I'm sorry that it took so long to do another live. It ain't going to it ain't gonna take that long again. I'm back on track. It's uh, y'all blame Jay. Jason, Jay sent me a bunch of good books and it just shut me down. But uh, <laughs> oh, I'm not, I know I'm going to hear it now. Hey, Mish. Two more hours, man. I ain't, I don't have two hour, two more hours in me. Y'all have already kept me two hours and forty minutes away from my beer. Oh, got another moderator in there. There's a uh, Wendy Flores. I haven't seen you. You must you must have just caught the tail end. Just got off work or something. Ah, there's Jay. Sorry, <laughs> you ain't sorry. You'll be sending more in the future. <laughs> yeah, some good books, Jay. For real. I love old books. I love old books. Yeah, I appreciate you guys joining me. I hope you learned a little something. I hope, I hope there's some value to be taken out of this video, even though it was total freestyle. And for those of you, if I didn't get to your your, your questions, don't worry about it, man. I, I will get to them. My moderators remind me, just like today they did. I missed a question, and they reminded me. The new emojis are working. Oh, okay. I haven't seen any, but that's good. That's good. I, I hate to think I wasted my time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, oh. Yeah, oh, Pamela, I did get your email. I have three different emails for, di for different functions, and I can't remember which file I put it in because each email has its own filing systems. Pamela, send me another email for that, that membership. I totally forgot. Just got so much going on. First Thessalonians 5.23. Yes, sir. I've read that Bible, guys. Believe that. Yeah, but we'll go ahead and exit this video with one, one final thought. And that thought is, guys, no matter what information is produced on archaics about the future, and no matter what you accidentally hear from the media, you got to understand, man, no fear is the attitude you need to adopt. Because the world that will be built for you on a day-to-day -day basis is all in accordance to whatever frequency you're projecting. And you need to remember that. Until then, I'm hollering at y'all.